This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. It's the, uh, it's the ramble, and here we are. And uh, if you look over there, there she is, right, uh, right there. Hold on a second. Let me, yeah. There, there she is. Wait a minute, let me turn on your mic, too. That would help. Yeah, that would help. So how are you, my dear? Well, we've come a long way from last Friday with the electricity. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we, have, we had a little electrical problem last week. Uh, it was caused by us, actually. No, um, it was caused by you. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> we, the coffee pot? Well, it never happened before. Okay? Well, don't say it was caused by us. It was caused by you. No, well, no. There's both of us together now. Um, I, uh, uh, it wasn't caused by me. It was caused... Uh. No, I've had, you know, we, I've had that air conditioner on and done stuff in the kitchen. I did suggest to you, though, several hours before the show, not 20 minutes, I did suggest, why don't you try it? And see if it blows. Uh, we did say that, and it blew. Yeah, but twenty to ten. Yeah, well. <laughs> you know what did it? See, it, it, the last time it went off on me, it went off because uh, uh, I uh, uh, turned on the microwave. Now, the microwave. I don't care who you are, where you live, Any place. how good wires you yeah, have. It'll. If it'll, you got two things on, something on, and then you like the air conditioner, and then you turn on the microwave, you're going to blow a fuse. Especially if you're in an old building. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and we're in a real old building. I mean, this building is... 117 years old. Uh, yeah, if you, you know, uh, it, very old. Very, very old. And so, therefore, even though uh, things, you know, the things have been modernized through the years, like they put in electricity. <laughs> um, uh, they put in the electricity where in about 1910 or something like that? I don't and know. And it's probably, I went down and looked at those switches. They've probably been there since 1910, <laughs> you know. And then, you you know, you've got the pipes in the place. We don't, we we get great pressure in the sink, in the in Every the bathroom. Every place except the kitchen the where The kitchen, you need it. it's like, it's dribbling it's like, like an old man with a bad <laughs> prostate. <laughs> Yeah. Or a drool coming out of the mouth. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, that uh, you know, so we are, you know, it, it, it's a it's a rough building. I mean, we, it's kind. I kind of describe living in this place as camping out, no. because no, because no, things are different. Like there are no light switches except to, for two light switches in this entire apartment. Where I just know the kitchen, oh, the bathroom. The bathroom here. Yeah. This bathroom. And the light switch for the chandelier. Oh, you're right. You're right. And, and we only, so there are only two light switches. You're right. So you, if you want to turn lights on, like you have I to have go lights over here, to every every little yeah, one and turn like the them lights on. up in back of her there, they are. Um, I have to go up there and turn them on, switch them on. Oh, will you turn that? Will you turn that light on, please? Because I need it for better. Will you turn that on, please? Yeah, I will. Okay, but I forgot to turn on the fill light. No, it's not the light we use for fill. It's just fills the, uh, the it fills everything up better. There we go. There we go. By the way, I want to just see. Anyway, if, you weren't clear about something. I want to bring it yeah, up. Wait a minute, hold on a second. I just want to see, make sure our our uh, yeah, we're good, doing okay. All right. Okay, you had, you weren't sure why uh, Trump did the thing on Mika. 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 But Mika. it was because right before he tweeted, she was talking about the Time Magazine cover. Apparently, no, apparently, there's a Time magazine. Wait, no, no, there's several Time magazines. Trump made his own Time magazines and had them framed and had his picture in Time magazine, had them framed in all of his hotels. So Time magazine. And Mar-a-Lago and yeah. the golf clubs. So, and so Time magazine served them with papers. Get rid of that. Take that down. It's not yeah, us. It was, it was some kind of thing they wrote about The Apprentice and... It, it the brightest like, thing in television. Yeah, yeah. However, here's the funny part about it. He's been on the cover of Time magazine 11 times. Well, of So why didn't he put up one of those covers? <laughs> why did he have to put up a cover that he made up? Because he's a jerk and an asshole. 
Yeah. I mean, really, I go on his Twitter almost every day and call him an asshole. So then, she, then he does. This, do. He does this thing on Mika, and you know, the fallout has just been amazing. I mean, there, there's nobody. People in the Republican Party. Well, it's have about been, fucking time. Well, they, they, they're beginning to see that this guy could very well lose them votes in the fall elections next year. You know, because he's just he's he, he's a loose cannon. He has. It's uh, here's the best way I heard it described yesterday, was. Somebody on one of these talk shows was talking about him and saying, I think it was, maybe it might have even been that the Republican female senator from Maine. What's her name? You know what I'm talking Linda, about? Uh, Collins. Yeah, Susan Collins. Susan Collins. It might have been her. I don't know. But, and I don't want to attribute to anybody. It isn't. But they said, and I thought it was a good assessment of the situation, that the reason why you have to be over 35 to be president of the United States is because we don't want people who are still children to be president because they lack the maturity and the 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 uh, grasp of things to to handle the job. And he's the bully in the school. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. And the fact is, he's acting just like a child. Yes, and he's a bully about it. I mean, an absolute child. And Mika Brzezinski today. It was it, terrific. Uh, uh, talked about and said, I, I, didn't, I didn't mind it. Of course she doesn't mind it. I mean, a lot of attention was thrown their way. It's got to help their ratings, you know. But she said, it doesn't bother me because I'm tough and my parents taught me to be tough. And I just had a father who died and a mother who's sick or something and a sister who's something else. And she said, Donald Trump's the least of my problems. She said, however, what does bother me is the fact that this man is president and he is acting this way. And that it is just absolutely unbelievable. And this country is falling apart right before our eyes. I mean, it's scary. Well, really it, it has you a... Know, she and Joe wrote an, uh, an op-ed in the Washington Post today, which was great. Mm -hmm. I what, put it on my Facebook. What did they say about Trump's uh, uh, alleged assessment that they went to his uh, tomorrow lago? Well, they, they, I mean... New Year's. It ended up that he went for a half an hour and left. She didn't go. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. So he, when he said her face was bleeding at that thing, she wasn't even there. They they were there like a couple nights before, but New Year's Eve she didn't want to go. Why? Did she say? No. Yeah. She's a lady. Well, you know, if you're if you're running a TV show like they do, and 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 Donald Trump has just been elected president, asked you to come to Mar-a-Lago for New Year's, you you go. I would go. You know, I wouldn't. You wouldn't? No. Yeah, you go. No, okay. I really I have so such disdain for him. Can I take somebody else? Yes, okay, absolutely. Okay, fine. Good. So I'll be ever be asked. You know. You ask. Now you I, do the asking. I saw something terrible on the news today. There was this um, this thing that happened out in where's the Bronx? The Bronx. Lebanon Hospital. Grand Concourse. Yeah. Uh, a guy who a doctor who had been fired. fired. Uh, uh, went postal, and that's exactly the word to use it. Yeah, went in with, uh, with, with the rifle, the no, rifle. assault rifle. Huh? Assault, assault, assault rifle. rifle. Went yeah. up to the seventeenth floor, got all the way up there. Well, he had, was wearing a um, a doctor's coat, thing, lab coat. So he had the gun under Underneath. the lab coat, and then he just started spraying bullets everywhere. And I think there were like how many people were hurt? Well, one person was killed, and like six or seven were hurt. Yeah, and I think they're more hurt though. They're more. They're, there? they're more injuries. Yeah, something like twenty six. I heard wow. or something like that. But yeah, and granted, this is a horrific situation. But I want to watch TMZ, <laughs> and I turn on the TV, and here is Channel Five nonstop coverage of this thing. Now let me let me say that by the time we got to it, the guy was dead. He killed himself. The, the the people were uh, injured and they didn't have to be taken to the hospital, hospital they, they were, were in a hospital <laughs> right and I'm watching this thing and I'm going are you ever going to shut up are you ever going to get to TMZ I mean is there a point at which you say look in 10 minutes we told you everything we know when we get something more we'll come back on the air so I say to Alex let's put something else on Alex says oh no I want to see how long it takes for them to put TMZ on and he walks out of the room it, <laughs> and I'm just sitting there. no but I mean it it was it, it was a, a case of the fact that they didn't you know they they kept they had when I tuned in I got 10 minutes worth of all the, the highlights and everything and then for the next hour 
repeated like on a loop. You know what the it same was? thing over and over. It seemed and like over. a training program because everybody's away on holidays, so they put all these like oh, yeah, interns and, and, and in. the guy who was doing it was narrating it was such an amateur. Well, it was you like know, an intern. What a bummer for this to happen <laughs> just over a holiday weekend. What? <laughs> what 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 kind of bullshit is that? Anyway, so now it gets even worse. I start watching it. They've got a camera on the ground. They must have had 150 cops out there? Yeah. 150 cops. Yeah. And uh, helicopters. A, a fire engine. Helicopters. A fire engine. Uh, some ambulances. Uh, some, uh, a lot of cop cars. Oh, and, and there were cops like in army gear. Yeah, with, his, with, 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 the, the, with the machine gun, yeah, with the assault yeah. weapons. The same ones probably he used to kill people. Right. Okay. And I'm saying to Marjorie, do we need that many cops? I mean, the guy's dead. The story was over with an hour ago. What are all these cops doing there? It's like, oh, maybe there'll be another person who'll come along and do it. What? It was like overkill. I like what you said. He went post office. <laughs> he went postal. He did. He went postal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when you go postal, there are two things that happen. You go crazy and go around shooting people, and you also can't remember how to get into our apartment house. Uh, so that's, that's going postal to me. Uh, anyway, so uh, so I, I that was just bizarre, the way they were handling it, and then and then all those cops there. I mean, I could see a lot of cops showing up when it was going on. What do you know? You walked out of the room, <laughs> and when let me change. I must the have come back into the room. You came back occasionally. <laughs> I must have come back into the room. Why do I feel like I have to pee and I just pee? Well, if you have to pee, right. go pee. It's my prostate. Probably. Anyway. Anyway. So. Um, it, 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 the whole world is getting rather bizarre now. It's getting scary. Well, you know, I mean, um, I didn't need this much excitement in my old age, you know. Uh, I would have liked to have had a little respite, you know. Somebody saying, hey, there, there, old man. We'll take care of you. Today, I get a thing from Oxford that says, well, here's what you owe, $188. No, it says you may be responsible for. You may be. Yeah. That's the word. Th this was for the uh, shot in my knee. Okay. Now, I know that Medicare paid a lot of that. So what are they sending me these things for saying, you know, well, here's what you owe. And then because they're not going to pay it because yeah. Oxford isn't going to pay it. Oxford never pays anything. In a whole year, they never pay, pay anything. It'll go against your deductible. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and I'll never reach my deductible. I reached my out of pocket already. I haven't reached my in pocket, my in network. Out of pocket is like what? No, no, my out of network. I meant out of network. Oh, that's a lot of money. I reached it, you and I haven't reached the, the in network deductible. <laughs> How much is going to doctors is a hobby with you? No, it's not. Yes, it is. I see that. Yes, it is. Look at her. Does this woman look sick to you? No. No. No, she doesn't look sick to me. It's Friday. I have two four-day weekends. How yeah. nice is that? Yeah, really? I have this weekend. I have to go back to work on Wednesday. And then next Friday, I'm going out to Fire Island. Yeah. So that's another four days. Am I not going out to You're Fire Island? You're coming out. Yeah, maybe. Well. You told me something today that made me <laughs> suddenly decide maybe I won't go out to Fire Island. I said you better Island. bring a book with you. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do, though? I'm gonna, I'm, even though I, am, I may not go. I am going to um, uh, still not do a show Friday. Yeah, take you know, off. I'm going to take the weekend. But off. you may want to come with me, so let's see. Well, I don't know. Not not if not if there's. Here's the thing. It's, <laughs> it, it. Do you want to tell them? No, you can tell them. It's Wimbledon. Starts Monday. Starts Monday. Now, to begin with, what does it matter? Serena isn't going to be playing. And I'm sure Venus is up to her ass in problems right She's now. She's got major problems. So I don't know if she'll be playing. So what's it going to be? It's going to be the B team, right? That's not a B team, kiddo. What do you mean it's not a B team? It's not B team. Yeah, I just think that uh, it's terrible. Uh, and and you and if I go out there, you're going to be watching tennis, no, and I'm going to be stuck gonna... there in this one room apartment or whatever. It is. I'm going to be walking in the sun. Going in the ocean. You're going to go in the ocean? Yeah. Are you really? Yeah. Really? I went last year. I don't even have a bathing suit. I so. don't either. Where are my running pants? Yeah, I might go in. I could go in with my shorts. Mm -hmm. You know. 
But I mean, I don't have a swimming suit. And I, and I don't either. And I'm kind of swimming suit ready. Well, you're getting there. What do you mean I'm getting there? <laughs> you've got to tighten up. Well, you do too. Well, I am. I'm working on it. Yeah, well, what do you mean i got to tighten up? I'm fine. <laughs> fine. I'm fine. Look at this. Look at this jello. Look at this. Look at that. No, that's not. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it, 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 who do you think I am, Santa Claus? And it, it goes like a bowl full of jello or whatever. <laughs> Anyway, so I uh, I just, you know, so I'm trying to figure out what to do with the uh, GabNet, or at least my participation in it. No, you don't have to make a decision Here's now. the thing. Here's the thing. We've got this, uh, you know, we've got this great, in fact, a lot of people watching it now. we got this great um, uh, live stream. I mean live stream. Uh, Facebook Live. Which is great. And by the way, it is so good that as of this month, and towards the end of the month, I'm going to stop. Um, live stream, yeah. Because live stream doesn't get me m many viewers at and all, it's and it does. And it's forty nine bucks a month, and it doesn't do anything yeah. for me. Right? That's a good idea. Whereas Facebook is absolutely free. The thing I use to switch it is a free switcher, and we're, you know, I mean, it looks great. Your like, pictures duh. terrific. You know, so I've I've been holding off because I want to make sure that. It, but I see no reason to keep going with live stream. Uh, it's been, I've had them for four years now. Started with them when we did the TV shows down that's at, right, uh, that's right. uh, at Adrian's studio. Uh, and um, I uh, have been with them that long. And up until recently, it was the only thing we had. Then all of a sudden, along comes Facebook Live. And these people are now trying to sell live stream by saying, well, you know, if you use live stream, you can click these things and you can put all your shows on Facebook and uh, YouTube and Periscope all at the same time. Of course, you have to buy our $300 a month plan. You can't do it with the $49, $49 a month plan. Well, fuck you, you know. So I've decided this month to do away with that. And then I got out of my, you know, uh, thanks to Damien, I got out of my, uh, uh, out of my storage locker. But I get a call today from uh, public storage, which is where I had my account, and she says to me, "Well, you know, the, you left some some stuff in the in the uh, storage locker, so it's not empty." I said, "Okay, so what do we do about getting it empty?" He said, I would have said, "It's all yours." I have to. I have to call. She says, "I have to call a uh, a, a, a junker. No, a junker to haul it away." I said, "How much will that cost?" She says, "A lot of money." I said, "How much?" She says. Hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars, and I figured that would happen, and I figured two hundred dollars was what I was willing to pay, so that's fine. And then she says, "And they won't be able to get here for about ten days, so we're going to have to charge you ten days rent for the storage locker." Fuck you! And I said, "Lady, and I, I you know, I wasn't mean to her because she's one of these functionaries. She's not a person who has any kind of power at all, and she told me as much." And I said. Uh, listen, you know, I've been with public storage for 14 years. I have given you tens of thousands of dollars. So I've, I figured somewhere around $25,000. No, no, no. I've been 25 years. No, no, so no, I could no, tell you what 25 no, years is worth. No, but, no, but anyway, I said, the least you could do is spot me 10 days. Are you, <laughs> that, you know? And she says, well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to my uh, my." The superior or whatever, and see what we can do about it. But you won't. So I may have to pay for ten days of the next month at three hundred and sixty-seven dollars. Don't a month. pay. Don't pay. Well, I'm I'm probably not going to pay them. Yeah, so uh, the, I took my thing off. Uh, off automatic. So there. Automatic. Let them come. Come, and, come, and, come and, get me. Well, I'm not going to pay them now anyway because I don't know what the prorated price would be. Okay. You're not paying. That's enough. Okay. Well, anyway. I'm company. willing to pay the 200 for them to haul the stuff away. I'm willing to do that. You know, I wrote Damien. I said, "Do you know anybody who's who's cheaper who could uh, haul it away and who might want some nice desks and stuff?" You know, and uh, I haven't heard from him, but the, I'm sure he'll get back to me about it. I, I just uh, it it just it the gall of these people. And and what happened was is every time they would uh, they would. Uh, raise the rent do you think they would send me a note saying we've just raised your rent no so i looked and it said i paid 341 dollars last month and it says next month you have to pay 369 
or 67 or something like that. And I'm going, nobody told me about this. If I had, if, if thank God Damien hadn't come along like an angel from heaven and managed to get me out of that goddamn place, uh, I'd still be there. And it, it, they trap you, you know, because here I am, I'm in New York. Well, how am I going to get the stuff out of there? All I can do is keep paying. Either that or just go into default and let them, you know. Oh, here's the best part. I said, now if I pay for the junker, neither you nor the junker can take those desks. Yes, they can. And sell them. That's theirs. And no, wait a minute, wait a minute. A and junker, she, said, she said, well, we don't do that. Yeah, she said, the, the, only, owns the only time we do that, here's what she said, the only time we do that is when somebody goes into default for two months. And so we have to sell everything that's in the storage unit in order to make back some of the money. And I thought to myself, wait a minute, why are we phoning, getting a hold of the junker? I just won't pay for two months and they'll haul the stuff away and, and, and sell it somewhere. But she said they don't sell it. Now, I don't know if the junker isn't going to try to sell it. The junker probably will. You know? Yeah, I gave up mine. Because these are really good desks. I gave up my two storage bins when my friend Carlos said last summer, this is it. I'm not taking you up there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, the desks we have here are really good desks. You can I'm see getting them. three more of these for the office. Are you really? Yeah, this kind of fell apart last uh, the other night because my thing pulled on it. And so it had a had a war, little warp thing. So I went and I got some of your glue. Mm -hmm. That's heavy glue, duty glue, some yeah. of that stuff. And it just, just right back where it should be. Good. So, but these are great desks. Oh, they're wonderful. You know, but the desks I had in there were all wood, and they were really nice. I mean, they were really, really, really nice. And uh, uh, okay, enough with the storage. The, enough with the storage. Well, <laughs> storage, storage stories. <laughs> Anyway, is it hot in here? It's very hot in uh, here. How come the air conditioner doesn't work in here? I think you need a stronger one. Really? Wait a minute. Oh, is that on? That's on high, Have too. you cleaned the filters? Yes. Well, I can't pull the filter out on that one anymore. No, because I tried and, and I almost broke it. See how I broke in there trying to get the thing out? It, it came out and then I couldn't get it back in and it was, you know. Well, that's probably why. It's probably we, filthy. We, we, no, it's not filthy, I'm sure. You know. Those things don't get that filthy in here, believe yes, it or not. Do. No, they don't. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Go see the one in the in the living room. Just it, because it you say they don't it doesn't mean not. it's not yeah. true. Well, anyway, we're kind of it's kind of getting hot in here. It's what? ten twenty six. I know it's ten twenty six. Just one of the. Do you want me to? Um, well, let me see here. Let me get rid of this. Should I roll on over? And, and let me bring up the uh, the uh, uh, Skype. Uh, there we go. And um, I'll just turn it on in case anybody wants to call. Yeah, come on over here. Oh, wait a minute. I got to. Uh, I got to. I got to get uh, the. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hold, hold, on, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where are we? Here we are. There. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Come on. Get over here. Uh, you know why I think I'm hot is because you were in the way. You were getting to the breeze. No, uh, it, it, go over there, move that chair. So there, it's it, it all the all the air conditioning is coming this way. Okay, there we go. Oh, that's much better. A little bit better. Not really. Yeah, no, really, m m much better. Anyway, so now we're waiting for somebody to call. Please call. You know, and uh, th this is the part of the show where, of course, nobody listens to the first half hour. Because I'm on it. Not because you're on it, but because they don't listen to the first half hour. And, uh, you know, we uh, are just sitting here waiting for callers. We may, you know what, you know what, we, what we're going to do if you don't call fast is, is we're going to kiss. Uh, and, and to see old people kiss is just nauseating. It's gross. Huh? It's gross. Yeah. So uh, give, me a, give us a call. And let me see here. I'm trying to do something here. What am I trying to do? Oh, this is what I want to do. I want to get the panel screen up there. There we go. There and we there go. we go. There's the panel screen. Okay. Now we just wait for people to call. But you see, this is what happens when we go to the phones early like you like to do. No, Nobody calls. It's time. Is it a fill-free night? No, it's not a fill-free night. So feel free to call. It's not a fill-free night. <laughs> it's a fill-free to call anyway. <laughs> but it's not a fill-free night. But so. it's a feel free to call. Feel free to call. Feel free yeah. To call. 
So anyway, uh, we have several ways you can call. Here comes Jeff Stein, and he's coming online. Hey. Uh, there's several ways you can call, and you can go over to gabnet.net and find out. Now, uh, hold on a second. I'm thinking of, uh, I, I don't know. I, oh, oh here, here we go. Anyway, it's Jeff Stein, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll, he's the first one to call for the citizens panel tonight. There he is. And uh, let me, uh, let me see here. Let me uh, do whatever I got to do here to get you on. There you are. Hello. How are you, Jeff? How are you doing? We haven't heard from you all week, actually. No. No, oh. you were up in Massachusetts, huh? Yeah, I went to see my daughter, my grandkids. Yeah. Nice. And huh. take care of them. Yeah, yeah. And there's Phil. Did you, ever, did you ever think, number one, that the day would come that you were a grandfather and that you would look it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got the beard. You're, 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 do they have a nickname for you at all? Do they call They have a, a, a hate pop, when you pop. do that, pop, Phil. Pop, pop. Pop, pop. Yeah, yeah. What was Phil doing? Well, Phil's futzing with his camera because he wants to make sure he looks good. Do you have your green screen? Is that is that your green no. screen? No, no, no. I, I took the green screen down until I find the right software. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Does, uh, didn't, so didn't they send you software with it? Yeah, but that software doesn't do what I want on video. Uh, there's something else uh, that, that does it. It's 500 bucks though, so I'm not quite oh, sure what, I want to spend what, it. What, what is it? Tell me. Uh, I, I forgot. I got to look it up. You know, again. you can get the program that we that mm -hmm. I use here to switch yeah. this program, right? Yeah. Uh, the Walk video. track betting. No, it's called OBS. OBS. Yeah. yeah. Same. Thing. <laughs> uh, uh, no, that's OTP. You're thinking of. It's OBS. You go online, yeah. download it, use it. It's got a green. You can. It's got a green screen program built into it. For video. For video. It's all video. Uh, all right. Well, I'll try that. Yeah. yeah, I'll play with that. It's free. Doesn't cost right. a penny. All right. Well, you know, I, I was looking at different things that you know, you're saying these work hey, with Don't wait. wait, uh, wait, wait. Uh, yes, Jeff. Yep. Jeff, We're still here. We're still here, but your your, your your camera. There we yeah, go. Now there you're there. there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, don't panic, Jeff. Don't panic. <laughs> the night is young. <laughs> don't panic. It's, so, yeah. Now that your grandfather, uh, Trump's not going to let you visit your uh, grandkids if you're uh, from Iran or Iraq. You notice yeah. that he didn't do anything with Saudi Arabia. <laughs> huh? Because he has no. hotels in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Well, you know, everybody's related in Saudi Arabia. You know, uh, are they? No, I don't think everybody's necessarily. Yeah, they're all cousins and, and, and princes. Really? Or, uh, unless they're prince. Filipinos that work there. You know, Mike's trying to call me, and every night he has the same fucking problem. Here we go. I'll call him back. I don't know what it is, but there's something wrong. Hello, Mike, you there? Mike, are you there? Can you hear me, Mike? It's because Yes, he's yes ah. Mike. Okay, Mike. Yeah. Turn on your, on your camera. What is your problem, Mike? You, 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 I have to call you back. There's something wrong with your Skype and the well, way it's set up. It used to be like that here. Yeah. We had a call. Do you have the newest back. version of Skype? Yes, I do. Wow. Here he comes. There well, he is. Who, who knows why it happens? And uh, I have something. I showed this to Phil already. And whoever, uh, you probably remember Alex. Spanglers in Berkeley? No. Spanglers. Yeah. It's, uh, it's where Barhoff has all of their uh, meetings. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. One of well, the best places we get a love spinner. It's the Bay Area Radio Hall of Fame folks that he's mentioning. That yeah. you're in, by the way. Th that I'm in, yeah. I'm in the Bay Area hey, well, Rob. Hall of Fame. This, this place here, if you like uh, herring, mm -hmm. they have sour cream and herring for 95 cents mm. at the Gapnet store. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's that's pretty good. I mean, my mother walked off with about five of those. Oh, okay. Because she got, I don't know why, I think she got pissed off at the waiter for some reason. Why, I don't know. That's my mother. <laughs> Was Mayor Christopher wor uh, the mayor then in San Francisco? No, Alioto. Oh, okay. Was in the Joe Alioto. Yeah. yeah. So Spengler's is where what the Bar Barhoff has all their meetings and stuff, or yeah, it's uh, Fourth and uh, 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 Fourth Street in Berkeley. 
you know, nice area. Just just the meetings there. I can't remember where we had the. Uh, 1919 4th Street. Yeah, I can't remember though where. Can we give the number? I don't know if okay. it's still there or not. Well, enough commercial for Spanglers. Uh, uh, I um, I can't remember where uh, the uh, the induction was for my induction into the San Francisco Hall of Fame, but uh, it was in in the East Bay somewhere. But I can't remember. Yeah, whenever where. I yeah whenever I got a, a thing for there, me I never went, but uh, they uh, they always uh, would send an email out, and I think that's where they had them. Is that where they had the the induction ceremonies too? I, yeah, I think so because they had the meetings there. You know, whatever they whatever they did, they used that. Place. Yeah. Now, it, I wonder if Brian's in his car tonight driving. Yes, there he is. Hey, Brian. Yes, I am. Yes. Well, that, hold Brian? on a second. I'm going to have to do something here. Stretch I have to make some. Out. I know. I have to make some adjustments here. No. Oh, I know what the problem is. Uh, turn your uh, camera uh, w wide, Brian. It's not. It's. Uh, huh? It's uh, it's in uh, portrait mode. Portrait. Yeah. Now let me see. And then if you turn it, yeah, there we go. It'll 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 flip. It should flip in a moment. It isn't going to flip. What's the problem with it? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there we go. go. There we go. Okay. All yeah. right. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Brian. He always calls us when he's driving home, which I think is kind of really cool. It has a. He's got one of those scent things hanging off his mirror. Those little pine uh, tree yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, what what scent flavor is it? Pine. Um, uh, I'm guessing pine. It's it's old. I just keep yeah. it on there. I identify the vehicle when I park it in places. <laughs> ah. Really. Smart move. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think I that, ever. I don't think I've ever bought one of those for a car. I haven't either. Huh? I they, haven't either. They just seem so cheesy. Well, they go with that beaded seat. You vehicle? know the beaded seats. Well, the beaded well, seats were are, the beaded uh, seats in like the taxi. No, wait a minute. The beaded seats are is supposedly very good for your back. Am I right, Rob? Do you know about the beaded yeah. seat things? The taxi yeah. drivers have it. With yeah, it's for their comfort. Yeah, yeah. They, they work on your circulation. Yeah, and they put a little bit of air space so you don't get hot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, when I want to identify my car, I just push the panic button. And then it starts beeping, and the lights start flashing. So, oh, there it is. There it yeah. is. <laughs> there it is. Yes, you, you annoy others for your own benefit. Mm. All and the time. That seems to fit, fit your M.O. It seems yeah. to fit your M.O., Phil. Why do you think I'm here? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I'm going to say good night, folks. Good, good night. The old good people, night. everybody close your eyes. The old people are going to kiss. Yeah. Oh. Here, wait a minute. Give me some tongue. Here we go. Mm. Oh God! Show it from a hard That's a psych. That's a psych. By the way, uh, uh, Jeff, that's a sight your grandchildren would not want to see. No. No, that's true. Good night. Yeah. That almost that'll break Skype. Yeah. Anyway, so um, uh, how are you all? Uh, uh, Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeff went up to Massachusetts to see the grandchildren, uh, and that's always nice. Do you drive up there, uh, Jeff, or do you? Yeah, yeah. It's easy to drive, about two and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. And um, I get to see my daughter and my son-in-law, and, and then uh, the two girls, the two Please young excuse ones. Excuse me for a few minutes. I have to adjust my uh, phone holster. So. Oh. Okay, well, uh, don't worry. We'll just get nauseous while you do it. Anyway, by the way, if anybody else wants to call, you know, last week, last Friday, we had, what, 13 people with me mm -hmm. uh, on at the same time. That was a bit much, but we can accommodate upwards to 25 people. Now, I, I'm not suggesting that we do it tonight, but certainly a lot of you out there can call and... Uh, um, to be part of the citizens panel, all you have to do is use Skype, and uh, it's uh, it's oops, it's a pretty simple thing to do. So, you know, you know, uh, it would be interesting if you put together a call with 25 people on video. You just make the rule that you have to call on a person. There's no there's no talking back, no butting in, no nothing. You know, well, probably that would ruin your whole act, wouldn't it? Well, yes, but uh, I'm willing to participate for the good of all. For, for the good of all, I see. Huh. All right. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> it sounds sounds very socialistic to me, but uh, <laughs> I think so. Sounds considerate. 
No, no, don't go that far. Yeah, God for fucking bid. Yeah, God for fucking bid. Yeah. God for fucking cock sucking bid. Yeah. Anyway. Now you I sound... can go further. I can add more ad libs in there if you want me to. God for fucking cock sucking douchebag and yeah. dick licking twat sucking motherfucking bid. Woo! Wow. You're the fastest <laughs> cursor in America. Yeah. Like an auctioneer of cursing. <laughs> Well, it's funny because when I, back in the days of MySpace, I took one of those uh, cheap-ass, uh, corny-ass uh, uh, personality assessment tests, and uh, one of the personality attributes that it uh, that it gave to me, and I quote, "Insult dash artist," and I almost fell off my chair laughing my fucking ass off. Insult artist. Insult artist. Wow, that's cool. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah. You'd make a good president. Yeah. Hey, that'll take you far in life. Let me see here. Oh, here comes, here comes, uh, first of all, John Rockwell is calling. And then, I don't know who this is that's calling, but who's on the phone? Who's, who's on the phone? Hey, it's Steve. Steve. Okay, so Steve has joined us. So now yep. we're up to uh, eight people with me. So, you know. I'm here, too. And, of course, John Rockwell is there. Hello, John. I, I'm not sure how long I can stay, but I found something I thought you would like to see. Oh, okay. Well, uh, oh, Midnight Blue okay. Business Card. Midnight Blue Business Ooh. Card. Yeah. Uh, we didn't yeah. Have, get our own cards. We have to carry cards with oh. your name on it, oh, yeah, but that's that is, okay. There's my name. Because they call you anyway. Yeah. What does it say? Hey, Alex it Bennett, producer. producer. It's backwards in my thing here, but oh, you can, hopefully you can see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! Well, yeah, you know, you could tell. You could tell this was from a long time ago. I actually had it laminated. <laughs> oh really? I was going to say, do you have any more? You know, I still yeah. have. I, I I still have some uh, business cards that they made up for me at Live 105 in San Francisco. Uh -huh. It's my favorite business card of all time, and I actually found them, and I have them uh, uh, in the uh, bedroom. Oddly enough, and if you want one, you can have it. It's a Live 105 <laughs> business card that says Alex Bennett. And then for that just gave what that just gave me a beautiful idea. That just gave me a beautiful idea here. If uh, John and you, oh. Alex, want to uh, take those business cards and scan them and just post it onto your Facebook page or on the GabNet Live Facebook group page. Yeah, well, no, and, sell you know. sell them in the GabNet store. There you go. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I only have the one on a, though. On a T-shirt, maybe or something. Who knows. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I also nope. found that this was these were things that I found. I I closed out my uh, my uh, what do you call the the uh, um, oh yeah, no, I just went the went blank on it. But no, the, at the at the at the um, the, oh, the bank, bank, you box. know, a little, yeah, a little uh, deposit. Yeah, my deposit box, which I really don't need anymore. But I had a few old things, including my social security card and. And my and my draft card and things like this. Well, oh, you know, I'm gonna lose <laughs> them if I leave them. Yeah, my draft card. You can't find. It? Yeah, can't can't find my passport. But I've got two old passports. <laughs> yeah, it's like I mean, I have this up. The other thing I have is I have a a lifetime a lifetime membership to the Art Institute of Chicago, which yeah. I tried yes. to use about five or six years ago, and they had no idea what this was. <laughs> was, my grandmother gave it to me when I was probably about thirteen or twelve. You know? Yeah. But hey, you know it says life. Well, I didn't get to finish. I life. didn't get to finish the it's story with my business cards yeah. from Live One Hundred and Five. So it yeah, says Alex can. Bennett, bad Jew. Ah, oh, very nice. <laughs> oh jeez. Bad, <laughs> bad. And they made up a whole box of those. You know. Yep. Well, hey, it's they, almost a new month. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I just yeah. thought I'd mention it. That's all. Being Irish Polish, they probably call me something like Spudlock or something. Well, you know, another month. Uh, yeah. it, it, to me, it seems to represent closer to death. So, you know, oh, I. Oh, no, it does. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, it doesn't. Jesus. Another uh, day older and deeper in death, right? <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I got a. I got a. I got an email from uh, my ex-wife, Ronnie, and she's home, and she is. Oh, says she can't. So, uh, she gets out of bed about fifteen minutes, a couple of times a day, 
And that's it. Because he's feeling better. I heard you mention that. Well, they no, they uh, they 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 cut her up like a carp, man. I mean, they gutted her like a fish. Uh, wow. You know, so oh, wow. is that robotic surgery for no, those kinds of no, things? No, no, I don't think so. No. No, this is you know. not laparoscopic where they go through it the little holes. Right? No. no, this wasn't laparoscopic. Here they had to cut off the head of the pancreas, and then they had to do something with the stomach, and then they had to do something Ugh. with the. They had to remove her. Redo, her, redo, redo, her, redo, uh, redo the plumbing. She had. To, they had to remove her. Was it not her spleen, but her? Uh, I guess I don't know something else. Spleen. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole. People do thing. It, get rid it's, of spleen. It's, it's, it's gallbladder, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's a. It's a uh, operational procedure that's uh, you can look it up it's called the uh, what and i forgot the name now uh oh, the, ho the holy shitectomy <laughs> the holy shitectomy exactly <laughs> think like, holy shit did they do all that to me yeah. Oh, wow yeah um, uh but uh, you know you uh, it 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 oh, was uh, quite an operation but you know i mean the fact that they could operate on her i saw a story today in talkers uh, that's the daily thing we get oh yeah about the talk business and uh, there's a guy down at uh, w uh, kdka down in uh, philadelphia yeah right uh, who uh found out he had pancreatic cancer and it's inoperable mm -hmm. oh shit yeah. oh god no K kdka is the pittsburgh one KYW. Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah 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 kyw is no. isn't yeah. that like most most uh, <sighs> pancreatic cancer is inoperable not it's how early it, you catch it. it, it well, it, yeah, but most people don't catch it early because well, that's it, the problem. It's, it, they it's don't, hard no to symptoms. There's almost no, yeah. It's not one of those things they go looking for. You know, and it's not. You don't get a lot of symptoms. You, know, uh, that you can say, uh, hey, that's. You get a lot. You, well, you get symptoms, but they mimic stuff. You know, it's mm -hmm. it, like she it said she was itching a lot. You know. Oh. Uh, she. That's and, a little weird. You know, but you don't associate that with pancreatic cancer. Okay. Mm. And then even when she went to the hospital to find out what all these as mysterious ailments were that she had, it took them about two weeks to figure out it was pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeez, mm -hmm. God. Wow. Mm -hmm. What kind of testing did it's, they do? Yeah. Well, uh, wait a minute. Jeff, who knows the medical business. Yeah. It used to be that uh, you would uh, identify what your problem was, that you had pancreatitis. Uh, and they would tell you, well, you got about three months, and then you're dead. Yeah, yeah. That was the procedure. Yeah. And Go home and, and figure out what you want to give, uh, give your money to whoever. Yeah. yeah. Basically, when my so three father months, was, you're not going to need it. Yeah. When well, my father was diagnosed, all they did was say, read about it. Go on the internet and read about it. And don't matter. Don't don't mind coming back. They don't That's tell right. you. At least his doctors wouldn't tell him how long he had to live. All they said to him was, this is what you have, and our advice is just go home and Google it and read about it. We'll give you information if you want it. It's all over the place. But they would not – they did never gave him, uh, you know, a, a, a time to live. So. Wow. Oh. I know. I know. Hmm. That's terrible. My, yeah, my friend didn't want to – tell anybody about it yeah how do you do that <laughs> just it, maybe, I don't know. it gets it gets pretty Same. obvious pretty quickly because you start to drop weight like crazy that's one of the symptoms yeah uh my i went home to see my dad I was he i went home thanksgiving to see him he had he didn't get diagnosed until uh, the following February, right? I went home in November, and he said, yeah. I said, man, you're losing weight. You look good. He goes, yeah, but I'm not dieting. I have no idea how I'm losing all this weight, but... Yeah, no, no. That let reminds me... me of the... Alex, remember the movie, and everybody, the movie The End with Burt Reynolds? Yeah, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. Great movie with the blood disease and he's eating... I just thought I I I I, I thought you know, the doctor a, a when he of... yeah you know, when the doctor tells him he's dying of a you know a, a, blood, a, disease. A, a blood disease or something yeah. uh, he said gee and I thought I was looking good because I was losing all this weight you know and yeah. and yeah and, and then he says it, yeah, yeah uh, by yeah, the way the I'm, movie I'm, I'm, the movie is a comedy and he does oh, the and, comedy. and he does die at the end or, no he doesn't no he doesn't he doesn't but you don't know whether he's going to die or not. 
right, you right. You know, you ruined it. So <laughs> I never saw it. it but I love, I love when uh, I like Burt Reynolds too. Everybody was... knows the Butler did it, Alice. And, and uh, it was, and it was a good. It's a very good movie. It's a very good movie. But anyway, uh, Dom uh, DeLuise was hysterical yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, but anyway, and Robbie Benson. Yeah, okay. Well, we're not doing we're not doing movie <laughs> reviews tonight. But uh, okay. it's uh, it's a good movie, Robbie and I'm glad Benson. you brought it up. Uh, but the yeah. thing is that, that you know, my, my old friend uh, Bill Hicks, the comedian, died of pancreatic cancer, and he was 32. Yeah. And, yes. um, oh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a very pernicious disease. And uh, uh, my question to you, Rob, did your father drink or smoke? My father smoked, quit probably 20 years before he, he got the... Uh, <clears throat> so what the, did they attribute the pancreatic cancer to? They never even, they don't. They didn't tell him what caused it or what didn't cause it. And my father drank, but he drank socially. You know, I mean, my father was never a drinker, right. but he'd drink like a night like tonight, you know, have a little scotch or something like that. Yeah. But he wasn't someone who got hammered all the time, you know. Was he heavy? Um, <clears throat> Chunky, thin his whole life until, you know, until he, his late 40s early 50s then he got chunky but you would never say he was fat how old was he when he died he was 86 oh well, that's oh well it, it, and 80, he got it at like 80 i think he, he got it at 84 he lived about uh, he, he found out well he found out he had it in in uh, January, fe February of 2010 9 10 I mean I don't want to be I he died in December of eleven, so yeah, he lived a long time. Yeah. I don't want to be un ungener uh, ungenerous about this, but or if that's a t word at all, uh, but you know, when I when I think of Bill Hicks, thirty two, dies of pancreatic cancer, and then your father is eighty six. Uh, oh, absolutely. You, you, there's I a mean, certain amount of you that you, you feel sorry, but hey, you know, you had him for eighty six years. Absolutely. Now, no, no question. It's like when my I, mother. I, it's like when my mother died. When my mother died at a hundred, um, yeah. uh, everybody said, "Are you sad?" And I said, "Not really." You know, I mean, I had her for a hunt, uh, for, the, for these many years. Long time. You know, how, and I, how, if I sit around moaning about it and crying about it, uh, uh, what does that say to people who lose their parents when they're forty? You know. Oh no, no how, question about it. Yeah. Yeah. How long did your mom have Alzheimer's? She didn't have Alzheimer's. Oh, uh, what did she have? Dementia. Dementia. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. How uh, long did she have it? She she, she, she she had dementia probably the last five years of her life. I mean, to the point where... That's not bad. You, 95, getting you know, dementia. Well, I, I said to her once, because I was coming out to New York to look for a job, and I said, Mom, I'm, gonna, I'm going out to New York, and I'm going to be there for about three months. And she said to me, well, say hello to my parents. Uh, and then uh, I said, then I don't know, stupid, stupid Alex says to her, Mom, your parents are dead. And she got hysterical. She got hysterical. Like, she just found out her parents were dead. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So far, yeah, you know. So far, I was gonna like, say was, wait a minute, one at a time. Uh, yeah, let, let's go to Mike. Mike? So far, knock on wood, my parents are both still alive. My dad's around about 96, still kicking. Wow. And uh, all he has was uh, a little spot on his uh, prostate, cancer. But the doctor looked at it a couple of times, you know, keeps checking on it. He goes, hell, you'll be dead 25, 30 years for that thing, you know. Yeah, it's it's not going to kill him. No, hell, hell, no. just you live, you outlive this damn thing. Is how I would be surprised. Yeah. Not to mention but that when you get to be that age, the the cancer cells grow so slowly. Yes, I heard that the other day. Yeah. Where did I hear? Maybe I heard it here. That you know. I think you heard that here. We had that discussion. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, he had the prostate cancer since he was about. Seventy-five. Boy, this is really a rating. It hasn't, moved, hasn't, not, you know, hasn't changed or nothing. This is really a ratings getter of a discussion, isn't it? <laughs> did, you, did you talk about I, uh, the hospital shooting today? Uh, yes, I oh, did. Oh, in New York. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, so well, that's I, cool. I know what that was. Yeah, you, you talked about it earlier with uh, Marjorie, but uh, you want to... Uh, well, I mean, it, 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 you know, it, about? it happened. This doctor got fired a couple of weeks ago, so he decided to come back and get postal. Came back mm-hmm. with an assault rifle and uh, uh, killed one person and I think injured something like 25 killed nurse, or something. Killed a nurse and injured a couple of... Uh, of uh, young assistants, whatever. Yeah, but I think I don't think any of them knew who he was. Even they yeah. weren't even like he was. If he was looking for anybody specific, he I don't think and, he even. And found then I him. think he turned the gun he on himself. And, killed, and then he supposedly, yeah, yeah, and then he killed himself. Took himself out. But and and that was all well and good. Okay, you know, I, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it gives us a few more parking spaces, but. Um, <laughs> Oh, out if you're hanging out in the Bronx. Oh, but what I was bad. saying is the way TV was treating it and the way, in fact, the police were treating it, uh, this is an hour after it's over. The guy is dead. The thing happened in a hospital, so they don't have to take anybody to a hospital. All right? <laughs> and there were about 150 <laughs> cops there and fire trucks and ambulances and a guy, cops with assault rifles. And I'm going, go home already. It's over. You yeah. know? Well, they I called it a level it one. Yeah. yeah, they well, called it a level one emergency, emergency which is a big one. I think people just what, like... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Phil was trying to say something. Yeah, uh, I, I just made a movie quote. I'm Benny Blanco from the Bronx. Oh, I, yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there were a few of those were interviewed, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I watched uh, quite a bit of it this afternoon, just... Uh, by default, because the Carl TV Lito's was way. on, it was, there was almost what, nothing else what, on. What made it a, uh, a, a number one emergency or something? Because the guy was dead with, in Probably a short the hospital time. location. They thought uh, that that was maybe, I don't know why, but, you know. Well, but I mean, I th- maybe that was I more think for about a minute and a half, they thought it was terrorism. Uh, oh, but was it this ha- guy of yeah. uh, uh, what nationality was he? I think he was Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's a doctor. He, probably he was did. black. He was black. Oh, he's black. He was oh, okay. Black Jew. Yeah. 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 You know, but I, I mean, saw the pictures of him. he was a but bad. No, but he had also been. He had also been. He, he was never really fully qualified as a doctor, and they they had him in only for about six months, and they got rid of him. And he was all they. Of course, they always look and try to see if the guy had a record. Well, he did, of uh, of of abusing women or something, or being, or or you know, trying to. Yeah. Force his uh, will on whatever, but I don't know whether that was. I was thinking maybe maybe he wanted to go and find whoever had uh, well, filed. Well, let's suit face it. Who, him, better, who, be, who better? Who better than? A, wasn't who better than a doctor to nurse a grudge? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know. Okay, I he thought that would get a like laugh. That. He <laughs> was pretty. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, he 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 had, he had not had the most. Uh, the people that knew him and he lived down in the East Village. And supposedly neighbors were like, he wasn't very, he was a relatively sort of cranky guy. <laughs> Nobody really wanted to deal with him, it sounded like. That's interesting. So, Usually you hear things like, he was oh, a he's so nice. Man. He was yeah. so nice. He was you the know, sweetest different. guy. He loved my yeah. children. After that's he one raped way, five people. You know, right? <laughs> that, that's, that's one way to get a, an apartment down in the uh, village. Is just, you <laughs> know, rent control apartments. Well, I don't know. It's tough when the guy's dead, but, uh, you know, it's available. Well, but you, you know, you, there was a time in New I York bet, City. I bet they, I bet the landlord got some calls this afternoon, too. Yeah, no, no. There was a time in New York, and I don't know if it exists now, where it was so hard to get an apartment in New York, people would read the obituaries. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. To see who but, died. Well, I can't what, so, what were you going to? Wait a York? minute. Wait a minute. I think, I think Brian was trying to say something. Were right. you, Brian? Well, two things I wanted to say real quick. One was that uh, nowadays people, barely anybody can afford an apartment in New York, yet alone here in Pittsburgh, for God's sakes. So to hell with the obituaries now. And the other thing is I just arrived home, so I'll see you on the other side. Okay, and another thing we got to do is get you some lights for the inside of the car so that we can see you better. <laughs> there, there, there we go. There he is. Boom. Yeah. Okay, the and then then we'll put a green screen in on the windows, and then we'll make people think that you're in Europe. You know, <laughs> <laughs> all you right. need is OBS. Okay, we'll see you on the other side as soon as you get inside. Yeah, you, you know, got an hour. I didn't have the weight, the the money to waste uh, when it happened, but my uncle had a, an apartment on Mott Street for about thirty years. Mm. Uh, 
fifth floor walk up and he was paying 600 a month and he decided to give it up when he uh moved permanently up to oneonta and uh you know i just i i, I probably should have taken it you know just as a how much I yeah. probably should have. I would probably would have offered you something for it at this point because yeah. I'm looking for a cheaper apartment. Yeah, it was, was six hundred. Uh, yeah, that'd be nice. Fifth floor walk up though, uh, but not, not now. On Mott Street now, that's probably yeah, well, about I'll eighteen hundred two grand for a fifth floor walk up. I'll tell you what, yeah. which what is ha- cheap. Happened still. to me when I got yeah. married uh, to Susan, who was my yeah. my third mm-hmm. wife. Uh, her parents, the parents had an apartment that they owned. They bought yeah. and owned. And it was like a two-bedroom apartment, a lot of space, really nice. And they said, it's yours if you want it. We'll give it to you. Wow. And we turned it down. Here's mm-hmm. the reason we turned it down. It was at, uh, on, uh, off of 2nd Avenue in Alphabet City. 2nd uh, mm-hmm. Ab- Avenue and I think C or and D. You didn't speak C, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, it that, was the kind of neighborhood 70? that at night, if you left the apartment, you'd be dead before you got to the street. Yeah, a lot, a lot of Absolutely. Time. Yeah. I wish we had taken it anyway and just moved somewhere else because it today would be worth a fortune. You yeah. know, because that neighborhood now has turned like all other neighborhoods turn. Junk idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, you lived a few blocks yeah. away from there for a while when you were on Houston. That was. Uh, you know, your place was great, and the place, and you walk up from there, and you know, a few years back, and it, it was looked pretty good. There were good good stores and restaurants and bars yeah, opening well, up. Tell, tell them, right. tell, tell them who when I left that apartment moved in. Oh, with well, the Fourteenth Street one. Yeah, I was talking about when you were, in, we were on Houston in I, the I, uh, I know oh, Houston. Houston. In the, uh, when you were you were in you were in the the one with with Stalin on. Oh, the, oh, oh, Lennon, oh, with yeah, Lennon on. Do you know they? Yeah, you that, know that. they took that statue away. They really? did. I, I forgot. I just I just went by there on the bus yesterday, is, and I forgot to look. Uh, <laughs> no, somebody does not have a sense of fucking humor. I mean, that yeah. was wonderful. What it had was, a, 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 I guess there was like a, 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 a Union of Soviet Socialist Republics uh, going out of business sale. <laughs> and somebody picked up this, one, this huge statue of Lenin, you know, with his hand out like this and all of that. Uh, like it had been in a square somewhere in Russia, and the name of this apartment house was the Red Square. Wow! And right. and so it made sense. That'd be perfect. I I would go up to that statue every now and then, go look at it, and just say, "This is wonderful." They took the thing down. Ah, exactly. They still have the in in the front hallway there. They still have all the the uh, the the ocean the the. The artworks with all the the fish and everything in there. Yeah, well, the guy the guy that? who built it uh, brought in people who were like avant garde artists to do oh, artists, stuff everything. with it. Yeah, and, and it, the uh, guy was, you were asking about Bernie Getz, the subway. Right. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, Bernie the, Getz. The Bernie the Getz Michel- moved into my apartment uh, after I moved out. Really? And, yes, <laughs> and mm-hmm. then he went down the subway and shot a couple of people. Uh, all right. Didn't he stab them? It, I, no, I, no, it was a gun. They wanted to stab it, him it, it was with, a, a, with a screwdriver. Yeah, yeah, with a screwdriver. Oh, okay. so, so he says. Uh, and a, we, um, he um, uh, 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 shot them. And, and ever since, I've, one of them wound up being a paraplegic for life. And I feel somewhat guilty about that. Because if I hadn't moved out, Bernie Getz He probably would, wouldn't have been on that train, They right? wouldn't have been on that train. Yep. Yep, well, yep, someone yep. else would have been dead. You saved somebody else. That could yeah, be. Somebody, that could every be. life, the way it touches others, is weird. But speaking of that, I'm I'm getting drained here. I'm tired. I'm I'm gonna jump, but I'm gonna keep listening. Okay. There you go. Thanks, Steve. Well, uh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll call again okay. soon. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Take care. Nice bye. talking to you. Bye bye. Uh, the people that own the people that own the beer store and bar that I go to in my neighborhood are friends with Bernie Getz, and I've seen him three or four times in the last two years. He pops in, has a few beers, uh, puts, uh, you know, he seemed, his big thing now was, uh, or he he was in the post a while back because his landlord didn't like the fact that he was letting squirrels come in. He was feeding the squirrels in his apartment. (laughs) They're my pets. By the way, we're being joined. Bernie is definitely still wacko. We're joined by Kevin, but wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, okay, didn't huh? he get busted for selling pot? 
Well, he definitely, the last, last time he came in, he had a sign. He was at something saying, you know, legalize marijuana. So I know he's involved with that. I don't know, no, he got, he busted, got arrested, uh, I think, for, for, selling, for selling marijuana. To like a... To like a, a narc or to somebody, uh, yeah. I think yeah, he did. But who gets? But he, didn't, he didn't go. He wasn't. He wasn't put away for. I don't know whether. No, he, I guess not. Uh, at least not for long. Anyway. <laughs> I got a question, Alex. Yeah. Okay, if I was gonna buy an apartment instead of renting it, can you do that in New York still? Oh yeah. 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 I mean, we everybody, 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 everybody here at this apartment. I mean, one of the reasons I mean, we want to get the lease here, uh, mm -hmm. which we've been fighting for, is because if the thing ever goes condo then we have an insider's price and we would buy it in a second we'd oh. probably sell her her apartment over on the uh across town you and spend a uh, half a million dollars a unit just to bring it up to code you know no how much would it now uh, the uh, the it's owner of the building has to bring it up to code oh before he can sell it mm -hmm. yeah. if you own the apartment okay where you are living now let me just say mm -hmm. now the maintenance in that does the management have to take care of that for you, or do you have to do it yourself? There's a monthly fee. There's a, yeah, monthly, there's a monthly maintenance fee for the like mostly for the outside for for the outside hallways and the and everything else, right? For, for yeah, co-ops. Co-ops are sort of a New York thing compared to condos. Right. They're slightly different in what you own. Right. You know, that's all. <clears> I, mean. I have a friend who owns a co-op, and he owns his he owns his apartment, but he, but they everybody sort of chips in. To deal with the hallways and the elevators. Well, Marjorie, Marjorie and the, owns yeah. her well, apartment. And, and the difference really is you don't own anything there. All you own is shares in the corporation mm -hmm. that runs it. That's right. like I can't my, remember. I don't I, I think. I own a share of a co op. It, it, uh, my co op is a business uh, called CCA right. Global Partners. And right. so I'm a shareholder, an equal right. shareholder in that. Right. Well, yeah. equal only in the side. Like you get different amounts of I'm shares. I'm trying to remember. I don't, you only get one share per owner, uh, and yeah. uh, your rebate uh, depends on your volume. Well, wait a minute. Of wait a minute. Hold on a That's second. Different. I think Marjorie is not a uh, co-op. I think she's a condo. Yeah. Can you all see me, by the way? Huh? Yeah, I can see yeah. you. We can see you fine. Yeah, oh, yeah. there he is. Be nice if you had a little more light on your face, but that's okay. I know. I have to do the same thing. Uh, huh? My light's behind me. That's yeah. The Every, uh, Phil, of course, uh, goes out and spends a lot of money on lighting. And <laughs> it wasn't a lot of money. And, you know, yeah, I have the lighting anyway for other stuff, you know. Uh, uh, am I lit well? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I, well, you know what I use for lights? The whole place is lit. <laughs> I, I have, I have a, a wall sconce up here, and then I have a, a, a kind of a torch thing with the quartz torch light here. in there uh, down here. there. And uh, <laughs> I look, it torch looks terrific. There. You know, it works. Yeah. It works. Now, what you, the uh, you know, we should guess. It, yeah. We should guess what is Brian eating tonight. He always eats. Well, well, he, he, he just gets he just home. From, home. He, well, he just gets home from work. And so he's got to eat. So we should guess I'm every right. night what he's eating for dinner. Pop ramen. This is something interesting. <laughs> it's uh, gallop potatoes with uh, uh, bits of ham in it. Now, is oh. uh, where did you get that? Is that a... Uh, Freshly thought out so, item, or is man it dinner? Well, huh? Hungry man dinner. A hungry man mm -hmm. dinner. What is it exactly? No, uh, it was uh, dinner that was made earlier by uh, my uh, mother, who left the microwave for me when I get home. Oh, so you live with your mother? Yeah, I live with my parents. You live with your parents. Wow. I guess a lot of people are doing that now. Yeah. Well, economically, it works. Uh, well, economically, in some places it works. where it's really hard to live on your own. And they don't mind. They don't. They don't mind. Well, they don't they mind you. It. They don't mind you living there, right? No. They never say to you, "Hey, you're a grown man yeah, now. Get out of out the of house." <laughs> yeah. When are you getting out of here? Hit the road. Do you ever get that? Or no, really? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Good for them. Good for them. It sounds like somebody yeah. doesn't want to talk. And, to and if they said it, he wouldn't let them out of the closet for air once a day. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the beatings would stop. <laughs> um, so anyway, today uh, Mika Brzezinski uh, uh, told her side of the story. Yeah, they actually he's... went in on a day off to do that. Did she really? Yeah, they, they were both scheduled ratings. to be off today, and they decided to go in to this, work. 
they haven't talk had about ratings. This. They haven't had ratings like this and and viewership like this ever. You know. Yeah. Well, it's uh, huge. Yeah, but you know, it, 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 it. I think that emotionally, they would rather that it not be as the result of the stupidity of others. Okay. <laughs> you know. Uh, That's true. I, there's two sides to every story, and Trump is tweeting his side, and and uh, they're they're saying that uh, uh, what uh, Scarborough asked them to do, asked Trump to do in regards to the Inquirer, uh, Trump is saying he didn't do it, and the guy that was the head of the Inquirer says that he didn't do it either. So well, so, so uh, what? So what? They, you know, forget that about, forget about, forget about that. Let's look at the bigger picture that this president is acting like a three-year-old. Well, uh, yeah, I don't it's like I don't like this, uh, Twitter stuff. It's got to stop. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's it's time. It's getting very old. You know, I would right? rather him. You know, he's been elected. I would rather him start dealing with the things that are important. But he's uh, not going to deal with the things that are important. North Korea. He had uh, he had a a a, uh, a whole problem here with a health care bill, right? Right. As you may have all heard. All right. Now, here's the point about that. How much about that do you think he actually supposedly knew? He didn't read it. He didn't understand it. That that's why he's tweeting right now and and fighting with Scarbo and Brazil and uh, and Mika because uh, he has no involvement with that bill and I, I would like to see him start having some involvement with, uh, with well, the he, doesn't ha he doesn't have involvement with that bill because he doesn't know it's, what's in it it's not his bill. he can't sit well, long enough for somebody that, to right, tell him there you, that's exactly what it is he doesn't have the he doesn't have the ability he gets distracted I, I think you're 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 listening too much to the left-wing media uh and all the insults i don't even things. listen to the left-wing media i sent you something you said don't send me this don't, bullshit. Yeah, don't send me but that if bullshit again you if you would have listened to it you would have seen what's you know what what's going on and and from a different perspective look uh, nobody dislikes the press more than i do I mean, I think they're useless, especially on days like today where they were trying to report this story out in Queens. And, and it was like every station didn't want to sign off because nobody wanted to blink. You know? As a former co-worker friend of mine said, they're about as useless as tits on a suitcase. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it wasn't in the Bronx? I thought it was in the Bronx. No, it was in, it was in the Bronx, excuse me. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah. Benny Bronco. Yeah, so anyway... Uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I just, I just think that uh, the guy is just I, there's something wrong. I think he has attention deficit disorder or something. Uh, no, but I, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Senility. It's some, you know, he he um, he pushes through and he works on the things that he thinks are important to him, and uh, but for one reason or another, this thing there's a disconnect. Uh, there's a disconnect with this health care bill. There was a disconnect with it when it came from Ryan. Now there's a disconnect while it's in the Senate. He, he's just not involved with it, and I don't understand why. Because this is, uh, this is you know, what he wanted to do. You would think that he'd follow those things through. Yeah. What's he going to do with North Korea? Uh, I guess order out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, what the hell is he <laughs> You know what he's going to do with North Korea? He's going to sit around and insult South Korea. That's always a good solution. Uh, no, didn't he already meet with the South Korean president? Yeah, or yeah is he insulted yes. him by bringing up the trade, the trade, the trade we have with them, and how bad a situation it was. You don't do that in public when you're in the version. Did he do that in public? Oh, wait, wait, did he do that in yeah, public? In public. That's yeah, you. That's yeah. you do in a private meeting. Right. You know, I, 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 put them on the spot. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, I sent a tweet out today about blackmailing uh, Joe and Mika, and I got 55,000 hits. I, I, really? I, I sent it and on Twitter. I, I'll post it on Facebook. Well, next time, you, next, next, next time you do at the bottom, uh, say, I'll be on GabNet tonight. Yeah, or something like sure. that, you know, because was, I could use those 55,000 no, hits. I, I had to turn down Bill Maurer tonight, but I'm happy to be here. Who, Bill who? M Maurer. Uh, Maher? Uh, Bill, Maher? Bill Maher. Maher. Bill Maher. Maher. Bill Maher. Yeah. 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 He went ballistic tonight. Did he, how'd he go ballistic? Well, he just had, 
every joke he could come out about uh, the president, he was just just can't believe all the. He brought up all this stuff he's been doing. You know, have, you, have you heard the latest from Mika? And no. Mika is, is pretty close to Melania. She's kind of oh. like hinting that maybe oh. Melania is about oh. ready to leave him. Oh, by the way, we ha- hold on just one second. That is the awesome. We have something that would She's- normally have in the old days been considered a full house, don't we? Uh, Not yet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, one more. one more. No, wait a minute. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. Okay. We need one more. One more person calls. We're in. <coughs> but if you look at this, usually the eighth person uh, was uh, not getting a camera on prior to this. Now everybody's got cameras that's got cameras. Yeah, no, yeah and, and no problem. So, uh, folks, we need uh, one more at least to make a full house. Anyway, here, here's the point. You were talking about Melania. I think yeah. if he hadn't made it to be president, I think they would be getting a divorce about now. I, I well, don't think that... If you, that, her, if you look at her body language when they show these pictures, she just stands there with a stern face. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, like, isn't she from Croatia? Croatia well, yeah, yeah, I mean, she, she yeah. looks like somebody who doesn't speak the language that well. Well, yeah. yeah three languages. Well enough. And and the swat of the hand thing, uh, I really think that she was, uh, you, you know, they were in a, a uh, Muslim yeah, country, yeah. and yeah. I don't think you hold hands in public uh, with uh, in a Muslim country. And she probably caught his. You try to off. excuse everything, don't you, with this oh, guy? It just makes sense you're, to me. You're, you're, I mean, yeah. Uh, no well, it makes really... sense to me. This guy's a what? fucking asshole yeah. with the with What's the, the time with time the maturity of a three year old. Exactly. You know. She just looks like she's standing there saying, "Blow it out your ass." Yeah. In her, you know, in she looked mind. that way. She she looked that way yesterday when they were standing yeah. there, when the yeah. South Korean president came. Reached. She looks like there's if there's any place she'd rather be in the world. She, not here. I don't think she. There. I don't think. Well, she, I don't think she wanted you know, this. You know, she didn't want she the did, attention. She did. But, you know, the thing is, if she didn't want to be there, she's got a lot of other places she could be without having to have any aggravation, with having all the money and all the power and all the stuff that she could want. She doesn't have to be by his side. And, uh, you know, but and Donald she's there. Says, no, I, Donald says you're going to be there, she's got to be there. Think, I don't think he gives a shit, you know? You know uh, who we need to hear from is Baron. I would like to know what, I would like to know what Baron thinks. What yeah, are you yeah. About, about all Listen, all I've heard, I've heard imagine? enough. I've heard enough from Trump children. I don't need another one. <laughs> yeah, but he's he's got a high IQ. Yeah, twelve <laughs> years old. Like what? The Being an asshole. Well, the, ask. no, no. Baron Trump. They they were saying that he had ADD and he had all sorts of other things. They the media was just tearing him apart, and he's just a ten, eleven year old kid. There was no yeah. reason for that. I didn't see. It. I didn't see any of that. Oh, I did. There, oh, yeah. Very early on, there was a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah but they it's backed not, off. They did. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, that's that's as bad well, as Trump's tweeting. It is. If he, right. has ADD, right. if he has ADD, then I would have to say that, like, father, like son. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. no, with Trump, though, he's, he has his disability. That's all that is. I don't and think so. Fa- I think so. You know, who's, you know who's father, like son? It's Kushner. Uh, well, no, Kushner doesn't say two words, uh, but he seems to... No, no, you know, no I'm yeah, talking about his, uh, his underworld connections and uh, probably all the crimes he's been committing. I doubt it. You know, I, you, know you can throw... You mean you, you hope? You, you can throw a lot of shit at the wall and hope it sticks, but I, I mean, don't think that he's done You mean it. you hope, Phil? You, you doubt it. You mean you There's hope. a lot of it to throw, too. There's a lot of it to throw, too. What? What were you saying, Tim? Have Phil explain what the VEB Bank is, the Russian bank in, in New York. VEB, what is that, Phil? I don't know. I never used them. Uh, do they have credit no, cards? No, that's, who, that's, who, <laughs> that's uh, Putin's friend. That's who Kushner met with. They were under sanctions for money laundering. One of them went to prison. Kushner yeah. met with them and left it off his form. Do you know that's not even a bank? They have no banking license. It's a way to funnel funds from the Kremlin on Putin's behalf to spend in the United States. Well, you know, uh, when I was watching that, when I was watching that Putin series, uh, I believe that there was a uh, scene where uh, he was uh, giving sort of uh, divvying up the uh, the power of uh, 
you know, which guys were going to run the banks and which guys were going to do that. But you had a country that had come uh, that, that was devastated after the fall of communism. And you had to have people step in and uh, and start doing things in their o more open oh, system. And it and it led to a lot of uh, graph and a lot of uh, uh, activity that uh, we would consider illegal. But, uh, you know, they had no choice. He had to put people in and start building a, a structure. Well, so well, according, according, to according to well, Forbes estimate, uh, uh, Putin may be like the third or fourth wealthiest person in the world. So yeah, one of well, the people the that took advantage the of that. The yeah. yeah, well, uh, he was wearing a high WC watch. His watch was like 30 grand uh, that I saw him wearing uh, during one of the episodes. Uh, it was an IWC, a really nice watch. Yeah. But anyway, kind of you noticed that, that, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like watches. Look at that watch. Yeah. I, I just, uh, you know, um, uh, but the point is that in Russia, the problem they had basically after the fall of communism in Russia was that it was like today we are a democracy. Yesterday we were communistic, right? You can't do that to people immediately. It's like, you know, it's like suddenly depriving them of air. I mean, it, it, the drop is too precipitous. You have to do it in, in measures. Well, they went bankrupt, basically, the whole yeah, country yeah. because of Afghanistan. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and that war it, it basically devastated their uh, their economy and uh, there was nothing left everything was falling like I I might I had mentioned uh, during during the fall uh, I they were talk I could have gotten a submarine for fifty thousand dollars a diesel submarine and where would uh, you have parked it Phil I, I that's I I didn't have the 50 grand to waste on it and uh, I couldn't afford it Bay. Yeah, no, I couldn't afford to run it if I got it, and uh, but the you know that did wasn't. You, did the you case. for a Just, moment? Did you for a moment consider trying to buy it? it you know, yeah, but it wasn't reality. Then I you're mean, a big you know, no, a, no well, shit. It's not do, reality. Wait, wait, what would you do with a submarine? A diesel? I don't know. It's outdated. Right. Which is outdated. Outdated. So, outdated. Well, I'm going to get the bragging rights. That's all. Thing. Well, you, you know, it would have been interesting. Parts for that thing. Mike, I bet you the scrap value was more than fifty thousand yeah. dollars. Uh, I just think yeah. it would work great, like Saturday night date night. <laughs> sell it to Mexican, sell it to Mexican drug runners. You know they've been yeah, using submarines. Uh, <laughs> 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 with a little bomb on it. And there was all sorts of things that you could buy uh, that that they that they were selling and selling cheap. Uh, you know, nothing. You know, nothing that uh, I had a place for or could have dealt with. But you know, I, knew, I knew about it, and, and it was available. Uh, yeah, but you're right by uh, right by Benicia there. You could have parked it out there with the mothball fleet. Yeah, really. Uh, they're throwing <laughs> those things away. Probably stole some parts. Are there any left out there? I remember I used to always yeah, go over to the East Bay, and I would go past uh, what was the name of that place? Venetia. It's in Venetia. 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 In the back and yeah, that's where they mothballed the entire fleet from World War II, and yeah, literally no, all these. Because in New York, on the in the Hudson River, uh, up past a uh, Bear Mountain. They had a mothball fleet up there too. We used to go by boat mm -hmm. and kind of go in. It was very in interesting to see because mothball was a great term since they did kind of look like you know the a, a, a cocoon had been wet, done over them. They were like they, all completely. They actually had maintenance crews on those things. Really? Yeah. Uh, had you? Uh, did they still have them on the on the uh, Hudson? Uh, up by Bear I don't know. I, I, haven't, know. I haven't seen uh, anything about uh, that. I know they have in Norfolk, Virginia, which is where my dad retired to. We used to drive down there. He was an ex-Navy guy, so he wanted me to drive by the ships. He'd point out, you know, various types of, you know, how old they were and all that. But that, I think they're still, because that's the biggest Navy yard, I think, in, in America. Is Mike, in I think Norfolk. Mike was trying to A say something here. Stuff. Mike? Yeah, Mike I, oh, I was wondering if Howard Hughes' uh, ship was still out the, uh, in Benicia. How remember are you? the uh, yeah the gold map. Uh, oh no! Oh, you're talking about you, you, airplane? You, you, you're talking. No, about, no, no, this is a, this is a boat. It's what they do for research. It's one of those spruce have, boosts. No, no, it was a boat, regular ship, research oh. uh, ship, but he was built. Oh. I think built, that was. Oh, Hughes built. Howard Hughes built it. Howard Howard Hughes built it, and 
somewhere in New York, the veterans and uh, World War II veterans are trying to get money up to save an old uh, sub pen somewhere mm-hmm. in New York, which I thought I'd be kind of neat, you know, to see an old sub pen. Mm-hmm. You know, off the Groton, in Connecticut, they're still, I mean, they're still, they still build submarines there and there's a museum and stuff. If you go on, you know, right in the, on the harbor there, um, yeah. in, in the New York, though, I mean, you've the got 60s. the one submarine over by the Intrepid, uh, the old, the, uh, you know, aircraft carrier Intrepid, there's the Growler or something, I think they call it, which is an old submarine, uh, uh, not probably a little after World War II vintage. Wow. And I couldn't go in it at the time years ago because at the time, I was like 280 or 90 pounds, and I wouldn't be able to. They, they, you had to walk yeah, through gosh. a doorway out on the on the dock. If you couldn't fit through the doorway, they're not letting you into the sub. <laughs> it's like, hey, Alex, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, wait, wait, hold on a second. Tim wants to say something, and since I can't see him and he can't see I gotta, us. I've got to wait for the Citizens Council to make some money. How's that? Let's start a Kickstarter to do a remake of The Russians Are Coming the Russians are coming. Ah. I bet oh, my get God. The money. I bet you'd get a million dollars to redo that in, to, in today's in a modern-day version of that. Except it costs $100 million to make a movie. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can make them for a couple hundred thousand if you do it right. Instead of the Russians are coming, the North Koreans are coming. The North Koreans are coming. Yeah, well, <laughs> so the you, Russians, know, you know, I have, a que- I have a question to ask all of you. Uh, hmm. uh, the reality of Russia... Uh, and I, I said this in a little five-minute piece I did about the reality of Russia actually hacking the, pre- the presidential election. Now, to begin with, everybody's wondering when uh, Trump goes to uh, the um, which one was G twenty. It's the G twenty. Is it twenty countries yeah. this year? Uh, yeah. The G twenty, and he's going to be there with Putin. Is he going to bring up to Putin the suspected hacking of our election? I don't think so. And, well, I don't think he will either because he's saying, well, it never happened. But then he blames Obama for it happening. Yeah. yeah. You know, Uh-oh. I mean, it's well, he, very he weird. Obama let it happen. He said Obama let it happen, but then he denies that it ever happened. Obama it, well, did let it happen. And it's horrible that he did that. Yeah. He, he should have stood up to that. It was horrible. That's horrible. Yeah. Are you serious, Rob, or uh, we're being facetious? No, I am serious. He knew about it, and he didn't make a big thing out of it because he didn't want to, uh, quote unquote, affect the election outcome. Mm -hmm. That's bullshit. He didn't want to. He didn't want to negatively impact Hillary. That's what he did. I don't. I don't think that. I don't think that's the reason. That's what they said. I I think he just didn't. That's what they said. I, I think that he didn't want to negatively impact the election. Period. No, no. He specifically said uh, he specifically said Hillary. That so he. Didn't, where did he so say they it? Knew this was going on. The intelligence community community knew that this was going on. They were hacking our presidential election, and our government did nothing about it because of the fucking election. Right. Really. Rob, you remember them saying because he didn't want to negatively impact Hillary's chances of winning? I didn't. I don't. I just. I didn't hear it that it was. Directly, of, in fact, because if you think about it, if they would have brought it out, it might have helped her. Yeah. Well, so I don't think it was to impact Hillary. It was to impact the outcome of the election. Yeah, and uh, Comey uh, supposedly was inv- and was aware of it and investigating this stuff too, and didn't say anything. Uh, you know, and and then he drops the investigation. No, hey, hey, Phil, Phil, you're wrong. Hillary he tried to say something. The National Security Council, when he brought it up, would not let him. McConnell would not let him. He wanted to make it public. Uh, well, Comey, who was the and, National and we Security found that out Minister. after the hearings. I didn't. I didn't like Comey either until I found out that he tried to be upfront about that too, and he was he was cut off by the National Security Council. But that was under Obama's administration, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Before the election. Yeah. Right. Horrible. But it should have come out before the election. Absolutely. Yeah. Probably. What do you uh, think about? Has, what has you, anybody read the stories in the Wall Street Journal about uh, Peter Smith, written by Shane Harris, I think? No. About the, the 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 operative that was trying to get to the emails and said he was in touch with campaign staff like Kellyanne and uh, not Manafort, but I think Bannon. Oh, you mean the Trump operative? Yeah, that was just came out in the last day or two. Yeah, uh, I forgot the guy's name, but yeah, we're starting, I re- to see, we're starting to see some more connections from the web 
uh, uh, there's just too many connections. There's too many people that left, you know, the connections with uh, with Russia out of their their, their their government forms, which any other federal employee would be fired and maybe put they in jail did. for lying Manafort, on those forms. Manafort left out a, a big a big thing. Then uh, Flynn. Uh, and uh, I Flynn guess was probably the, the biggest, yeah. Yeah, but Flynn was the one that was trying to, I think, get the operatives' uh, information for uh, of the uh, of the emails, the hacked emails. Uh, Flynn right, had, Flynn, and and then they, but they mentioned contacts with Kellyanne and Bannon. But Peter Smith is now dead, hmm. I believe. But oh. he was a longtime operative, trying to go after the Democrats, yeah. and. Uh, Let's work with that. So I think we're going to learn more and more. Yeah, I, and I, I think part of the I think part of the Joe, or the morning Joe stuff is a distraction. Could be. Yeah. Well, it may be a distra- I, It may be a distraction, uh, but it was a distraction created by Trump. Uh, yeah, that's true. Be something by Trump. else. There might yeah, be something else just trying to distract. Yeah, uh, but it isn't distracting the guys that are doing all the investigating. So it may be distracting the press for ten minutes yes. and our, and us, but certainly everybody well, who's working on that investigation. The, 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 pre- the press is distracted by shiny objects. Right. You know, uh, it's just using uh, the word uh, squirrel. Uh, can I you finish know? what I'm saying, Phil? Please, yeah. thank you. Um, <laughs> Do you think do you think no, Trump has no, Tourette? And Tim, uh, you no, too. Can I say something? No, oh, forget it. I don't. Even, I can't even remember what I was going to say. Shiny Jeff, objects. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> it, it was shiny objects was your last statement. No, I'm just saying that they go chasing after shiny objects. They they have to fill 24 hours worth of a day of news, and and anything that even they can take as a little sliver and turn it into a big pustule, they'll do. You know, As I so said, I mean, that's what that's what's wrong with this twenty four seven news cycle is they got to fill it. You know, so that when when uh, you know when when a thing like uh, uh, Trump and Mika Brzezinski, Brzezinski happens, it's such a big deal because they can fill the broadcast day with it that even the other networks beside MSNBC were talking about it and yeah. making a big deal out of it. You know, I think Trump uh, prepares uh, uh, these things. Oh, I think he does. I think he. Yeah. I think he. He needs to get when he needs a, a look over there. Don't pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. He pulls something like this, and then everybody goes up. You know, ballistic. But he has. But he had a big day. Why would he do that? He had a big day. The the day that that whole thing broke. Right. Yeah. He Some, did his energy uh-huh. summit. He 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 had the president, the South Korean president coming. All of this going on, why would he want to do that to distract from really the message he's trying to say? I don't believe that. Well, I, just think well, I, I don't know what he would be. Let, let me put it this way. foolish and an idiot. I think the argument would be, I don't know what he was trying to distract us from. You know. Hey, hey Alex, do you know Bob Setka? Well, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't think he was trying because if he... If, if he really was trying to distract people, he should be trying to distract people what he could, with what he considers strong messages. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, the, uh, 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 network, Tim, what were you saying? Sorry, no, lost, no, uh, no, do no, I know? Sh- I'm disconnected. No, 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 I see you. I see I you. Yeah, he's there. Is Jeff yeah, I hear you. He can say idiot on CNN. That's why it doesn't work on him. Yeah. See, I'm disconnected. You're disconnected? No. Yeah, you're, you're frozen. You're up. frozen, uh, uh, Your camera's Rob. frozen, but... You're, yeah, you're frozen. Back. What, what are you? Oh, are are you there? Off. Are you there, Rob? Oh, Rob's uh, frozen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we've lost Rob for the time being, yeah. but I'm sure he will uh, call back. Uh, what were you going to yeah. say? Wow. Yes, yes, Jeff. I, you, you know, know I, Bob. Grew up up in, wait, wait, hold on a second. I'll get to you, Tim. First, let's hear from Jeff. Nope. I grew up in Queens, and Trump grew up in Queens too. Yeah. I think I used to go. I used to go into the city every day, and I think I, I would get on the bus and go right by his house. And uh, I never got to meet him at that time. You really? guys were almost the same age, right? Well, kind of. You know, I mean, if I would have had the opportunity, I could have punched him in the nose. Uh, you should have. When I was eighteen or something. Well, what fun. PS did you go to? Did you go to- <laughs> <laughs> I wonder which one Trump went to. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he didn't go to a private right. school. Probably not. <laughs> well, oh, here comes Rob again. Let's see here. Rob, are you there? Rob? Yeah, there he is. Rob. Yeah, he's still frozen. Are you there, Rob? Huh. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you're there. Got We've got your audio, but we don't have a picture on you. I, I got him. You got I a picture it. on him? Yeah. Oh, we have a still. Yeah, uh, now we do, yeah. You're since still, I, uh, since I moved. Wait a minute. Since I, Wait, can, let me do something, Rob. Let me hang yeah, up on cool. you and just call you right back, okay? Right. Let me just, just uh, hang up on you and I'll call you right back, all right? This would be the He's best way. right next to his frozen picture. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Wait a minute. That didn't, that didn't take. All right. Let me try it again. There we go. Now it's ringing. And uh, we'll see what happens. There we go. There's his picture. Are you there, Rob? Here. Okay. Now we got you. I got you with a yeah. moving picture and everything. Okay. Now who was saying what? Tim, you had something you wanted to say. Uh, do you know Bob Seska? The from the radio? No, never heard of him. Uh, but the Bob, um, he's on Facebook. Anyway, he does a radio show in the mornings. He, uh, he had... Uh, Everybody does a radio like, show in the mornings. So uh, what? Uh, well, AM, I think, still, or syndicated. <laughs> he, he, got, he became very psychotic and found that it was from uh, a, a fairly common prescription antihistamine, a, a, a strong one, that he was taking. Yeah. Do you think... I have another theory. Is it possible that Trump's taking some regular meds and he's having a bad reaction to him. No, I think his problem is he's not taking any. Well, that, no, I, I think it, that's Frozen. what everybody says. I agree with that, too. But it also could be something he's taking. Uh, I remember my mother had a, a UTI in the, in the nursing home, and she lost it completely. She was living in the 50s within a week. So your, your, your health can get out of balance real quick. Well, also, there's certain meds you can take, like uh, I, I sometimes I take Lunesta to go to sleep, and that's fine. But there's the other one, Ambien, right? We had that's some Amb dangerous. we had some Ambien in the house. I took it one day. The next day, I was psychotic as shit. I that was guy, that guy Tiger Woods in trouble. You know, that was yeah. Tiger Woods' uh, yeah. drug of choice for the parties he went to. Uh, Trump is so anti-drug and anti-smoking and anti-drinking that I doubt that he's taking wait, any uh, well, wait, prescription no, no, I'm talking drugs? about a normal medication. You yeah, know, a prescription. normal Ball medication. Uh, a, no, man, like a man a man of 70, like a man of 70, that fat who is he's not taking, taking prescription taking. medicines Drawer like at least like to lower his cholesterol and to get blood his pressure. his blood pressure in 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 check. It, it, I would seriously doubt that he is there he is not without drugs. Would you agree, Some. Jeff? Uh, he should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He should be. He he looks at like, that age. And he I got to tell you, he lo he looks like a ticking time bomb. He looks. Yeah, like, he's probably Pants taking a water pill every also. morning. What? Pants put something in his coffee every morning. Yeah, right. <laughs> a little more each hey, day. Talk, a little talk more. Talk about dying. Did you know Van Amberg? Yeah, I know Van Amberg. Yeah. Was sure. he died today? Did yeah. he? Yeah. How Who old? Is that? How old, old was Channel he? Channel Seven guy. Yeah, uh, in San Francisco. He must have been like 80-something, right? Uh, yeah, let me look. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, he, he was he was up there. I, um, he was a staple on ABC. Yeah. Uh, you know, let me try and find it. Yeah. Uh, who else? Oh, you know who uh, uh, retired as well? Alex was Stephen Seaweed retired today. Yeah. You knew him, didn't you? I didn't know him, no. No. Oh. He was, know, he, was one of the, he was one of the people who was always around, and you heard his name, but I didn't. Yeah. I, there was no reason to be excited about him. <laughs> no, I, I didn't listen to him that much either. But you I know, just knew you know what I'm talking about, case. Rob. There are certain people in this business who, yeah, you, you know their name because it's mentioned a lot, and they keep working, but you, they have They're no, they have no great calling card, right, Rob? Yeah. Yeah. They were just there. Yeah. Uh, but Van Amberg died. Wow. It's, yeah. I'm looking for his age. I can't. Hey, you know, I'm counting now my age based on all the people that are dying. Okay. Well, his, you know. his fame or whatever kind of fame he had took place about the same time you were in San Francisco. So yeah. in the I, 70s, I, 80s. I, no, actually, mine, well, mine was the 80s. Yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. famous in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. But, and uh, When you were famous here. <laughs> when I was famous in New York, yeah. I had two fames. 
you know. By coastal fame. Well, it's famosity. funny. You know, I have two different sets of people and how they react to me. I have people here in New York go, Alex, Ben, and I used to listen to you all the time when I was a kid, and you were the the hippie with the, on the radio with the thing and that. And I go, yeah, that's right. And then I go out to San Francisco, Alex Bennett. Oh, I used to listen to your morning show with the comics every day. You know, and it, and the one audience does not know the other audience exists. Yeah. You you were like a, a thread that threaded through my life from the time I was 18 to now. You were you know, like a burr was... in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh! From the time he was 18. No, yeah, but it, it's it's true. It, you know, uh, when I think of my youth, when I was 18, 17, uh, you were there. And, uh, you know, I, I had some contact with you. And then uh, years later, you came to San Francisco I called you up and I said, "Is this the same guy that was in New York?" You said, "Yeah, come on down to the station." So you knew me. You knew me. You knew me in both venues. Is right. what you did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Jeff, did you ever hear of me when I was working in New York? Yes. Um, when you when you had that uh, show, that TV show, what I call the the, the naked show. Oh, Midnight oh, Blue. The, yeah, the yeah, naked show. Yeah, I used to go to New York all the time. Yeah. And I would stay in a hotel, and that was the only thing, you know. The only thing you could do. That's the only place you could watch it. Yeah. You, you had to be in Manhattan, practically. Right. Is that it? Right. It was you Manhattan. Had to, yeah. Manhattan. I lived in Brooklyn, and I couldn't even see the show I worked on. Right. <laughs> Unless I went to Alex's or some somebody where they, they were throwing a party in Manhattan, they had to have cable. Well, you could put, pull the tape off the rack and watch it. Well, yeah, but no, I didn't have a tape. I didn't have a cassette. I could watch it in the in the office, but I couldn't watch it at home. Yeah. I didn't have a nobody back in 1977, 78. You know, videotape machines were like eight, seven, eight hundred dollars. You know, if you could get them, they were beta or you know VHS. Yeah, you know, I still have. I have some. Midnight Blue tapes, but I had them transferred from the, the three quarter inch video onto onto VHS, and the guy who did it didn't have any way to correct any of the problems with with tape roll and things, so they're almost impossible to watch. Oh, really? Right. Otherwise, I, I, gonna, I make you a copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. keep wanting to make a, a DVD of it, but it's gonna it's gonna look awful <laughs> because it's there are places you can, can go get and get tape. those things restored, uh, but it's yeah, ex, I, it's I an expen it's an expensive yeah, process. Around, yeah. It's there a, must be some place. I'm just not sure I could afford it. You know it, what? You know what it was in the old days. We had oh. the f first videotape that I used was reel to reel. Yeah. And these half we inch reel to reel, is. right? And yeah. we shot all the early midnight blues, the black and whites, on a reel to reel. And then, uh, yeah, then then we went to a cassette machine uh, because the first cassette machines were coming out, and we bought the first ones. To come into mm -hmm. this country because I said this is the next thing, right? <clears throat> and it made everything Sony. easier because before I used to have to, I used to have to sit on my knees in front of two machines and then pre-roll them and then push the button at the right time and to get a clean edit and things. It was just, it was, it, I, I suffered. My knees were had scrapes all over them from literally on my knees in front of these two machines in, on the floor in my apartment. Okay. But anyway, we had the reel-to-reel -reel stuff, and a lot of that stuff was pretty classic shit. You know, I had I had stuff with like Abby Hoffman, and uh, stuff like that, and stuff we shot for Midnight Early Midnight Blues. If you took any, I took one of those tapes and tried to play it a couple of years later on on uh, one of those reel-to-reel -reel machines. It's garbage. It wouldn't go through because it lost. They lost their lubrication. And somebody yeah, told me right the right only up. way you're going to be able to make a copy of this is once, okay? You start the tape going, and then you keep spraying the head drum that it goes around oh, to yeah. give it yeah. lubrication. Uh, and maybe you can get one good copy out of it. So, th and, the, and also the oxide was shredding, too. Yeah. Just peel right off, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I deal with that all the time. People bring me real, real tapes from like the, like the 70s or something like that. And the really early ones from the 60s or 50s, which were when they were in a different type of tape stock where they didn't, it was, it was, you know, older, but it seemed, they all seemed to hold up. But the ones where they got there, where they started doing polyester lubricated tape, mm -hmm. that lubricant just become, became, if you didn't store them well, it just became gooey and nasty and got all over the tape heads. Magnetic? Uh, oh, the, the magnetic, the old magnetic quarter inch uh, reel to reel tapes, you know, audio tapes. Yeah. And yeah. I deal with it as best yeah. I can, but yeah. a couple of times I've had to tell people I just can't. You can't do I it. I can't do much more than I can try to sort of every uh, ten minutes, five or ten minutes, I have to clean the the tape heads off, you know, 
Yeah. No, it just doesn't work. Jeff has his hand up. Yeah. Yeah, I used to work in a in a lab on like I think it was Forty Second Street, about Sixth Avenue, mm-hmm. and uh, we processed. Uh, I remember we did uh, NBC every day. And, and then all kinds of uh, stuff for the military and, and other things. And, and the, the big reason that you could store stuff is actually you had of air conditioning. If you didn't yeah. have air conditioning, the summer would kill them. Well, that's, that's why mm-hmm. with audio tape, sure. I had mine in a humidity-controlled environment in the yeah, storage. That would be the now where it's thing. moved with Damien... Uh, Damien says that it's under some stairs and the building is concrete and it stays cool during the summer uh, because it's just, you know, there's not a lot of humidity that gets in there and so on. And he said your tapes will be okay because I was worried about the tapes, but he's getting the tapes out here anyway. Most of my tapes, oddly enough, very, very good shape. I'm, I'm amazed that they play as well as they do, you know. Well, California is a much drier uh property there yeah which you know even though san francisco has a certain amount of moisture as compared to yeah, say he's LA, an but, hour away he's an hour away from the city you know what i hate oh, though? Okay. You, you know what i hated most about cassettes uh, the thing i hated most about cassettes was the boxes they came in yeah you it's know the ones that always broken they the hinge. always break on the hinge. yeah 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 and then they don't stack and they don't yeah yeah Oops, yeah yeah you have your hand up uh mike there was a guy who worked for KCRA. He saved all the old TV tapes when he started. Mm-hmm. He was there for like 45 years. I mean, he's going back. He goes, he started laughing, laughing. He did a series. He goes, oh, my God, I forgot about that stupid camera on a tripod. All of a sudden, he see the tripod. All of a sudden, just mm-hmm. dropping down slowly. And these guys are lifting it up, trying to keep this camera but- Going. By the way, I got a question. Uh, Brian, are you still awake? No. Uh, I think he's gone. He's gone. We've lost Brian. You know, every week we lose somebody <laughs> while, they're, while they're on. Yeah, uh, when, when you were talking about being on your knees, that, that you know, it, that's when he was listening. He went off to La La Land. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know what? I but, My yeah. original tape recorder that I ever had, my uncle gave me, and it was one of the first... Um, um, uh, uh, it was called a brush sound mirror and uh, my uncle gave it to me because he knew that I wanted to be in radio and stuff and it had as a little for levels remember those old eyes those green eyes that used yes. to you know open and close for your levels yep, I had one of those <laughs> yeah and uh, uh, and I uh, went out and I bought some oxide tape uh, and ran it through there, and it did fine. It was a single track recorder. It didn't. It wasn't half track, so you could turn it over mm-hmm. and play it on the other side Mono. or whatever. Right. But it was one track, okay. And the track wasn't even the full width of the tape. It was like in the middle of the tape. It was like half track, but in the middle of the tape. Anyway, the tape that he originally gave me because he said, "Here, you got to have some tape." Here's the tape that came with it. Was paper tape. Wow. Hmm. Uh-huh. Wow. Oh, wow. Did that have surface noise or what? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I have a Wollen Sack. Yeah. Wollen Sack yeah, is way blue. later. This is the brush sound mirror. This is, yeah. if you look yeah. it up, they'll say this was like the first commercially produced tape recorder in the United States. Uh, you know, and Edison I think. Edison have anything to do with it? Huh? Did it was it Edison no. kind of thing? Or? No, you, uh, know how, you know how we got the, uh, you know how we got tape recording in this country, don't you? Mm-hmm. From the Japanese. Well, no, no, let me. Uh, here's, here's the story. Let me tell you the story quickly. Yeah. Uh, they were wondering, American intelligence, how Hitler could be speaking in this town, but they knew he was in another city. Yeah. And the sound was very clear, like he was there. How did, they, how, how did he manage to be in two places at the same time? So they sent in a reconnaissance group to go in and attack one of these radio stations. And they go in, and they find all these machines, and they were tape recorders. One of the guys that took one back to the United States took it to his home in Redwood City, and then backward, uh, what's the term you use? Engineered it, reverse reverse engineered it. Reverse engineered, yeah, reverse engineered. And built a a tape recorder, and uh, that tape recorder was then taken down to Hollywood, 
and put up in a hotel room where they had a wire running from Bing Crosby's uh, studio because he told Bing Crosby, how long does it take you to do your show? He says, well, first we do it, and they put it down on lacquered uh, uh, t discs, and then we have to mix the discs together to get the full show. That's how they used to edit it, right? And then you have a composite version. He said, how long does that take? He says, about two or three days. He said, you let me record it uh, with my little machine. You tell me what edits you want, and I'll have it to you within an hour. Yeah. And that's exactly what he did. And then Bing Crosby said, how much to buy into your company? And he was like a 50% owner of Ampex. Mm -hmm. And that was the company wow. that started it. But, that, but it, all all came, it all came from <clears throat> World War II and the fact that they wanted to know why Hitler was in two places at the same time. Yes, uh, first, I noticed that Mike has his hand up, but also Jeff does. So let's go to Jeff first. All right, this is a quickie one. Uh, when did you uh, move on WMCA to the morning show. This is because somebody died, I guess I remember. WMCA, I don't, I never really worked the mornings at WMCA. Uh, Are you thinking did, about when- Did somebody uh, when die who had that? Jack Andy Dan, who, who was the disc jockey that died, the, Murray the K? Well, Murray the K wasn't dead. Here's the story, one night I was, uh, uh, I'm, I, I'm, I do, did a show on Saturday nights at, uh, at uh, like 10 o'clock. And so I'd go in, so I'd get there about 9, and as I'm driving in, all of a sudden I just hear nonstop music playing. And as I pull up to the radio station, those days you could park right in front of it on Madison Avenue, I walk in, and on a gurney being wheeled out of the studio is Murray the K. That was his last night in radio in New York City. He supposedly had just collapsed and passed out or something or whatever he took an upper when he should have taken a downer or something yeah. that was his last night in new york and i went in and jumped in and took over his show that night before doing my show so that's the legend okay do you remember what what year that was god that would have to be if i got to new york in uh, when, when did i get there 19 69 69 i think Boy, I, I have to go back and listen to my life history now because I have to go <laughs> figure it out uh, or, or, or maybe, you know, ask Bubbles. He might know. Uh, but I think it was 69 that I got there. So this would have to be maybe 71 yeah. uh, or thereabouts, 70, 71. And then Murray the K wound up in sure. working in Philadelphia yeah. for a while. And then I think he died. He just, you know, had a heart attack and died. Um, and that was the end of Murray the K. Mm -hmm. A legend in his own mind. You know. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, John. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I was, okay. you didn't see, you saw me sort of running back and forth out, out, out of the picture and back in because I was looking for this. Oh, wow. I mean, wait a minute. Let me, hey, let me, let me blow that up for the that audience. That was one of my three or four, oh. uh, three quarter oh, inch, three quarter hold, inch hold, hold video. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold that this up. This is the editing. Yeah. Y yeah, that's our and uh, move it up it a little bit because I because every and inside I've got the actual, I got the big old nasty, yeah, three quarter inch cassette, three quarter inch sixty minutes Sony, yeah, cassette, yeah, and list some of the things that I edited, which I wish I could pull out because some of them were some of your finest hours, yeah. like at the movies, yeah, when we did the oh the, yes, the, the whole yes. Casablanca thing, yeah, it's here somewhere. Uh, Roxy Burlesque, which I think was what was Babyface, wasn't it? No, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was one of the other. Yeah. No, Roxy Burlesque wasn't. Uh, that was, that wasn't the. Was that the gay burlesque people? I, I think so. Remember. Yeah. East Side Sauna, which was a gay sauna. Yeah. I have that. Um, yeah. My my interview with the erotic stained glass woman, upstate somewhere, where she made, <laughs> you know, she made uh, these uh, uh, windows basically of. Uh, so, so called naked people or whatever. Yeah. Well, so I have in here. Oh, God. Uh, and a couple of the book reviews I did because I was doing book and, reviews. And, but that hold, that ta hold that tape up again. No, the, uh, the, the box. The box. Oh, you want to see the box? Yeah, here's yeah. how snazzy we were. We had, because we worked for Screw, because we did it for Screw Magazine. Label. Wait a minute, Screw Magazine, uh, you know, of course, knew how to do printing and get printing done. And so we had our own labels. How about that, ladies and Absolutely. gentlemen? Absolutely. Yeah. Including things that we never, all these things that we didn't really check off. 
mono yeah. stereo, dual language, color, yeah. black and white. It was all the same to us. Yeah. Was it mono stereo? Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and a few other things too, but that was a. I have three. I have three or four of these, and it's just that they're when I did try to get them transferred into VHS. Yeah. The quality of them, picture quality, was really terrible. Well, that was. That was maybe 10 or 15 years ago. I'm sure the technology is better. And I just used our, our, our my David and my friend Jeff, who has who still does a video out in out in, in North Jersey. And he said the same thing. He said, this isn't really working very well, but at least you can sort of see what it is. Yeah. My own, I don't even have a working VHS deck here at the moment. So, you know, I don't even know if I can even get these. How, you know, how could you get a U-Matic? Can you get a U-Matic uh, deck? To play that cassette on, I used to have one at the old studio. I used to have one at the old studio um, because I think uh, probably the the owners, uh, uh, Joan and Bob Franklin, Bob probably ripped it off from someone because he was a real character like that. And so I actually played some of these for the people there when I started working at the studio after Midnight Blue. We're talking thirty years ago, and but that was the last time I think these were were played. Except when my friend tried to run them, uh, translate them into the smaller VHS, which I'm, went nowhere. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you a story here. That's and then then I'll go to to um, uh, yeah. uh, to, yeah, to Mike soon. over there. But uh, Late. I uh, when I was working in Houston, Texas, I did a TV show, and so one day they made me a copy of it, and they brought it, gave it to me, and it was it, on two inch tape. Yeah, tape was two cool. inches back then. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I took this thing and it weighed a ton. You know how much they weighed. Yeah. A big metal reel, <laughs> heavy. Especially if it was a, an hour show. Everywhere I went in the United States, whether it was Houston or then to uh, <laughs> Minneapolis and then to Chicago and then to New York, and ultimately I wound up back in San Francisco, I took this two inch tape with me. Right? So now I'm, I'm doing a special over at Channel 44 in San Francisco. And as I'm looking around, I go, hey, that, isn't that a two-inch machine? And they said, oh, yeah, we keep one around here just in case we find some old tape we need to uh, dub off. And we have a two-inch machine. I said, I've got a tape you've got to dub off for me. I haven't seen it in like 15 <laughs> years. And so they, they, they said, bring it down. So I go, you know, I'm home, and I bring it down the next day. They rack it up on the machine. It starts going, and it's somebody else's show. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Gave you the wrong reel. Huh? I, I carried this thing around for I don't know how long. And you know something? Uh. I found it very hard to get rid of it at that point because it could like become my friend, you know. Yeah. Yes, uh, sure. Mike, you wanted to say something. Oh, those paper uh, recording tapes, how did you guys keep that from breaking all the time? Uh, tearing, I think, is a better uh, way to talk about it. Uh, it didn't tear, if I remember correctly. It was pretty, it was okay. You know, the only problem with it is, is that, and, and Rob knows this from, from having done a lot of recording in his time, that, that the problem with most tapes are that there's a certain level of surface noise. Uh, and that's where Dolby came in. Dolby took the hiss level and brought it yeah. down, and the other thing brought it up, and then it uncompressed it. I, I have to, I have to give you a whole lesson in that. But the the trouble with the paper tape was a lot of surface noise, a lot of grain noise, you know. But could it was. Record, could he record on top of it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I was just kind of wondering. It I had know. an oxide coating on the other side of the paper. I'll tell you, the first time I ever saw a tape, uh, any kind of recording machine, was my father uh, was working with a band, and a member of the band had a WebCore um, wire recorder. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, is that Brian? Yes. Oh, wow. We're getting snoring now. Uh, it had a, a, a WebCore, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? It yeah, was Webster recorder, of Chicago, yeah. it was called at the time. Wire recorder, and uh, it was a, and I that was actually they were pretty good actually, and I I heard the sound coming out of it. I went, this is wonderful. This is, you know, this is the wonder of the age. This was like the iPhone of its time, <laughs> you know. Jeez, so it was pretty amazing, pretty amazing all the way around. Um, Supposed, supposedly the uh, 
some one of the first attempts at, at recording on, on some sort of a tape was the WOR in the city. And what they had was actually a tape recorder. It was like a wire recorder, but it was a metal strip. And the problem is that if the while it was while it was recording, if it wasn't, sometimes they would have to, if there was a problem with it, it would jam or something, they someone would have to grab the metal strip and sort of take it down along the hallway, and it would rip your fingers. <laughs> to, to well, the wire recorder, if you if you broke the wire, you oh, you you it. tied it into a knot. No, you tied mm -hmm. it into a knot, yeah. and then when it went through You're the machine, kidding. when it went you through the had, well, yes, when yeah, it went but, through yeah, the machine, sure. it went bang. Boing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Minute, have we have we lost Rob too? Is Rob asleep? No. Are you? No. You still awake? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you only got two minutes. You think it's easy now. laying here? It's not as easy as you think. Oh, you oh no, it's away. not. No, it's yeah. not. Here's yeah. the other thing that I'm thinking about. This is a hell of a lesson to my audience who can tune in and watch everybody starting to go to sleep. You know. Uh, it happened <laughs> once. It happened was. once with Jeff because he was taking some pills. Wait a minute. Who's, you, was somebody making I'm a sorry, snoring well, noise? Oh, he's the only awake one here. Yeah, uh, but he he you, took uh, took a pill. You having a show on uh, Tuesday, Alex? No, I'm not. I'm going to take the day off. What Let's the skip hell? it off. Huh? Yeah. Why not? Bill. Hey, listen. Bill, you come down to Hollister. Hollister? Uh, no, I got to work Monday. Yeah. No, come down here this weekend for the a rally. Anyway, but I'll see you guys I'm on. I'll see. I'll see Saturday. you guys on Wednesday, and then I'm only working two days, yeah, and then I'm, take, then I'm taking. Then I'm taking Friday off. Uh, oh, you are. Yeah, I'm going to take Friday off, and uh, uh, Jack's going to be here in my stead, and uh, yes. yeah, I'm going to go out to Fire Island. Maybe I don't know. I may not, because all of a sudden I realize it's Wimbledon, and girlfriend and her friends are going to be watching Wimbledon, and I don't want to be stuck in Fire Island with a goddamn tennis match. <laughs> oh come on! Yeah. Anyway, wait hey, another, wave good, wave good, you U.S. Open. Yeah. Wave goodbye, everybody, and I'll see you again. Hey, uh, hey, I'll see you again here on. Uh, on Long Beach. Yeah, I'll yeah. see you guys again here on uh, on uh, on uh, Tuesday. Wednesday. 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 Well, I might good, listen. Good check check, Bill, check in. Check in. I might. Yeah, wait, I hold go on to a second. Monterey Saturday hold and uh, Sunday. Oh, I got to shoot. Hold on. I gotta get. I gotta get out of here. People phone each other. Uh, I, 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 I've got to, uh, uh I the Jack show and talk to him. Yeah. I, I, what was I going to say now? Uh, uh, I, uh, uh, no, I might do a show Tuesday. I might, wait a minute. I might do a show Tuesday. So, you know, stay tuned. Wave goodbye, everybody. Okay. Bye. 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 Okay. That's our, uh, that's our citizens panel. Whoops. Come on. Come here. There we go. That's our citizens panel for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. I better get out of here because, uh, you know, the, the, you got the intersection neck with next neck with Jack and Amy, and then at uh, one o'clock this morning, it's connections. It's so good to have had you here this evening, and I hope you join us again. I'll be back on Wednesday. Maybe I might do a show on Tuesday. I haven't decided yet. I might be bored, uh, but in the meantime, uh, as always, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her. Okay. okay.